Now, before you skip to the video, just to see what all my placements were, just let me make some clarifications. Firstly, I'm not going to be doing every single square, so there's going to be some... Um, I'm trying to keep this efficient as, and concise as, as much as possible. So, for example, for like the Sound 4, I'm not going to be uh, ranking their Curse Mark version 1 and version 2 forums. I'm just going to be doing their base form for the picture, but I'm keeping in mind they're able to act, um, access version 2. I'm really just trying to keep this efficient. There's going to be some other examples that come along the way where, um, you know, it, the particular like little square might be misleading for what I'm exactly ranking. So I'm going to be uh, be putting chapters for each uh, tier. And so just try and use that if you're kind of confused when you're looking at the end product. Um, but otherwise, other rules, I'm not doing any board so because I don't watch that, I don't read that. And I don't think that should be scaled with um, Naruto power scaling anyway. So don't expect any of that. Um, and then there's also going to be like a few, I guess, versions that I don't rank maybe just because I feel like it might be repetitive, redundant, or just kind of like not necessary. So definitely some of these, uh, you know, Nine Tails versions of Naruto are not going to be making the cut just because I'm trying to be efficient or I just feel like they're just going to be on the exact same tier and it's just going to be... Uh, cluttering up my tier list, but so I'm not going to be, you know, spending a lot of time on each little square kind of explaining uh, my reasoning for the ranking. There's going to be a few that I think are going to be controversial that I'll try to spend some more time talking about, but generally I'm going to be trying to keep this uh, short. So in the comments, I'm actually, I think I, I plan on getting really active in the comments for this video uh, to kind of explain more of my reasonings in depth, and I can kind of do that over the course of days instead of just in one sitting like this. So don't be afraid uh, to comment something if you're confused or you like have a different opinion about something and we can talk about it. But a lot of this is going to be built off of the previous tiers and I just kind of like feel like uh, each one of these characters fit. I kind of understand uh, who's stronger than a character and who's weaker and I'm able to put them into like sweet spots on this tier list. So kind of I might... Um, come back to like certain rankings in these tiers and kind of explain like okay we know that this person's not high tuning level because this person's in high tuning level so i had to put them in tuning level things like that but i think with all that being said i can go ahead and start this is going to be a long video so starting with let's see there's going to be random sound for people as you can see i only have one gaining ranking a bunch of tuning rankings that's because i think that most of the kids are really tuning level and I think that makes sense because uh, the adults constantly talk about how special Naruto's generation is and things like that and it just feels like um, really all the people that were able to make it to the finals were uh, tuning level in my opinion or really they're tuning level for the sake of this tier list. These are just kind of like guides just kind of to help us kind of like uh, separate the tiers. You know it's not super uh, set in stone that if I put someone in low journey, it doesn't necessarily mean they're a low journey level. It's just kind of like uh, separating the tiers and putting a, 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 a name that makes sense right next to it. So anyway, these guys, uh, Ken, she literally throws a bell at Shikamaru in the prelims, and that's that's all she can do. Uh, Zaku, he kind of cancels out his attack with Choji. Um, but then he uh, very easily loses to Shino in the tuning exam prelims. In fact, Shino takes a hit from a point blank and it ba barely draws blood from Z uh, Shino. So not a good look for him. Your Roy's the guy that fought Sasuke in the prelims. Um, he basically gets destroyed by one like lion's barrage by Sasuke, who was absolutely exhausted at that point. And then Mizumi loses to Konkuro because Konkuro treats him with his puppet in the prelims. So... I just feel like if they can't make it to the finals, I can't really uh, consider them even being tuning since that's the whole point of those exams. Now, moving on to more important characters, starting with part one, Sakura. Uh, <laughs> there's another, she has grit. We're going to put it that way. She has grit, but obviously um, probably the worst character in her class. So it just makes sense that she's on this bottom tier. Uh, after that, we have, we have Eno. Okay, I should be able, I need to memorize, yeah. So, she, I mean, she ties with Sakura, so it makes sense that she lands here, but she does have at least one ability. And then, where is Hinata? So, Hinata, she does kind of do okay against Neji. I think Neji was kind of holding back at the beginning of that fight. 
it's possible that she, you know, if she had fought maybe a few other participants, certainly like these participants, she might have um, advanced, although she did, she does have some mentality issues in part one. Um, so potentially she's in this low chaining level, based, but based off of what we've been shown, I can't uh, justify putting her up there. And then finally, um, rounding out this tier, we have 1010 in part one. If you go back and look at her fight against Tamari, she literally gets off paneled and once we go back to see what happened to her, like literally her back is broken on Tamari's fan and then Rock Lee, that prompts Rock Lee like jump down into the arena and Tamari just throws her unconscious body um, at Rock Lee. So very sad stuff from Tenzin. Um, but moving on, that really rounds out um, that tier. I didn't want to include, I don't want to include Naruto Academy, I, I suppose he can go in this getting tier, but uh, we never really see him fight anyone, we just know he's the last in his class, um, and that really just has to do with him not being able to properly control his chakra at that point, and just being like a class clown. So I didn't feel comfortable putting him, um, so it doesn't really matter. I'm moving on to the low tuning tier, and we're going to be starting this with people that really just have the name tuning to put them or the merit of tuning to put them in this tier. So starting with Uruka and Mizuki. Uruka is actually tuning. I don't know how many people know that, um, but he shows, he, he you know, in the pain invasion, uh, when pain comes to the leaf village, he doesn't show any abilities. Um, he doesn't show any abilities against Mizuki. Um, he doesn't do well in either situation. Mizuki loses to Naruto in the Mizuki fight. I might as well just put him um, there. Even though Naruto kind of kicks Mizuki's butt, I can't really justify putting them any higher. And then we have like these three, t these two guys. I'm sure you've seen like the memes of them and just like those two random guys in Naruto. But they actually do fight against Kagazu when Asuma dies, and they try to use like some water style. They have like special swords. It look kind of weird. Um, Kagazu instantly shuts that down. So that's all they really do. I can't really put them. I mean, maybe they're peak tuning. They just haven't shown it. All we really uh, can gather is that their rank is tuning. So I can't justify putting them in the peak tuning level, even though they're like adults. Whereas like this is going to be dominated by kids. But moving on, we also have the Demon Brothers. Oh man, that's going to be tough to find unless it's in... Yeah, I found it. So let me reorganize this like that. So the Demon Brothers, um, they almost... I mean, Sasuke does pretty well against them, but we just know that their rank is tuning. Uh, they get shut down by Kakashi like immediately, so kind of a similar thing. They just fight someone that's way better than them and then just get instantly destroyed. So I can't really justify putting them any higher because of that. But uh, starting to move on into more contentious stuff, more interesting stuff. Let's go ahead and put uh, Land of Waves Naruto in this tier. This is kind of the first case where I was talking about where like this placement isn't really going to make sense until I round out like the next tier and the tier after that, kind of. So really with this, my reasoning here is that he's clearly not better than Land of Wave Sasuke, who I reasoned would be in tuning level. Um, and it's really just because uh, clearly Sasuke outperforms Naruto in almost every event in the first arc. So let's, you know, he does way better against Kakashi in the Bell Test. He does way better against the Demon Brothers. They kind of tie during the, um, you know, walking on trees training. But then against Haku, um, Naruto joins the fight after Sasuke, but still is the first one to fall in that fight, despite, you know, having, he should have a stamina advantage on Sasuke. So, you know, really just narratively, there's no way he can be on the same level as Sasuke in the first arc, so I can't uh, justify him putting him in the tuning level. Now next, I have, and this is someone that's going to be on the bubble, it's going to be uh, tuning exams Kiba, which, yeah, I need to, there we go. So Chunin Exams Kiba, he almost beats uh, Chunin Exams Naruto. Um, and I know everyone kind of memes on him for, you know, losing to far. That's really just plot armor. Uh, he does very well, but I do feel like he kind of uh, doesn't quite fit with the people that are in this level. Like, I definitely feel uh, basically everyone in this level except for Rock Lee advances to the finals. And I know he was about to beat Naruto, but I just feel like um, it's not as, you know, what he was able to do and what he kind of does going forward is not as impressive as most of the people on this level. It's kind of borderline, but I feel comfortable, most comfortable putting him right there. Uh, but moving into the tuning tier, starting with Land of Waves Sasuke. So as I said, clearly better than Land of Waves Naruto, 
Now, let's explain why. Uh, now, I'll get to, you know, why he's on the same level as, like, a bunch of other kids that were in the tuning exams. But, <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, I'm not going to be doing uh, one Samo Sharingan because that's really like Land of Wave Sauce, okay? like, at the end of the Haku fight. I'm just keeping that in mind, really. I'm just, you know, like I said, I'm trying to keep this list as le little cluttered as possible. So, next I have... Naruto and the tuning exams and really this is force of death Naruto this is going to be uh, the picture I'm going to be using to rank force of death Naruto and like prelims Naruto uh, but as I said he almost loses to Kiba so that's um, you know it kind of makes me want to move Kiba up here but maybe not but I do feel like Naruto clearly gets stronger and you know this is kind of like the first uh, example of the logic like I said you have to you know I'm placing these people because they fit into sweet spots, or it's just like logically, uh, Chinin Exams Naruto is clearly at least one tier above Land of Waves Naruto. And he fits here pretty well. He does uh, pretty well against Orochimaru, and I guess, like I said, he doesn't do well against Kiba. But because I put, you know, Naruto in the low Chinin tier, or Land of Waves Naruto in the chin low Chinin tier, I have to put him at least one tier above. And once we start filling out like these other people, it makes sense. But to kind of give this Naruto credit, we see that Rock Lee says he wants to fight Naruto and Sasuke says he wants to fight Naruto. And both Sasuke and uh, Rock Lee had made it clear they wanted to fight the strongest people in the tuning exams. Now moving on to Sasuke. Uh, Tutsumori Sasuke, we're going to be saying this is kind of like, there's no like tuning exam Sasuke or like prelim Sasuke. This is going to be force of death in prelim Sasuke. He doesn't do anything that directly shows us that he got stronger from the Land of Waves arc, so that's why I put him in the same tier. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate that he had to fight Orochimaru, and then after he got the curse mark, he was suppressed for the rest of the first half of the exams. So, I do think he's stronger, like, certainly, but um, he shows some new jutsu, but I can't justify putting him a whole tier stronger uh, because of that. And then next, I have Tamori and Conqueror on the tuning exams. So, with both of these people, I don't think I can put them on the level of Gara. Uh, spoiler, Gara's not on this level. Uh, because, like, for example, they're terrified of him even when he's not in, like, his, uh, part, you know, one tail transformed state. So before he, before Gara goes to fight Sasuke in the finals, uh, he's getting, like, bloodlusted. And I think Tamari, Tamari tells Conqueror to, like, don't even, like, look at Gara right now or he's gonna kill us. For things like that, um, it's clear that they're not like the top top tier, especially narratively. But they they're always um, had a swagger to them in the tuning exams, where they're just like one of the strongest around, and they do extremely well up into the finals. So it makes sense they're at least on this level, and that leads us into Dosu. He does technically uh, beat Rock Lee in the. Uh, Force of Death, when Rock Lee is trying to, to protect Team 7, he tries to uh, primary Lotus Dosu, where Zaku saves Dosu. And then after that, Dosu starts using his sound to basically paralyze Rock Lee. So, pretty impressive stuff. Now, he did lose to uh, like a partially transformed Gara, I suppose. So, he's definitely not in these higher tiers. But he's certainly respected, and he was also like terrified of... like. Uh, version 1 curse mark Sasuke and things like that but he was able to easily advance into the finals so really this is kind of the this is kind of the list of people that were easily able to advance to the finals for the most part um Sasuke's Naruto was just rough around the edges and Sasuke was dealing dealing with the curse mark at that time but otherwise there's this is mostly yeah just people that cruised into the finals I have Shino next if I can find him yeah so like I said Shino easily beat Zaku um, and he ends up tying, yeah, this is just part one, Shino. He ends up tying with Conqueror, so it makes sense that I tie him into the same tier list as Conqueror, at least for tuning exams, Conqueror. And then I have Shikamaru in the tuning exams as well. Now I have to tie him in with Tamari as well, because uh, really, they, uh, he really, Shikamaru wins, but Tamari pushes him to his absolute limit. I think Shikamaru, uh, I don't think he necessarily uh resigned or um <clears throat> conceded because he was lazy i think it was just kind of a tactical thing because he had absolutely no chakra left uh when the attack started he uses his shadow paralysis on some just some goons and it doesn't even last a minute i don't think so 
Uh, she does push him to his absolute limits, so it makes sense that they're in the same tier. That's kind of going to be my reasoning for a lot of people. Like, um, just generally, if you if two people fight and they go like down to the wire, uh, I think that they're on the same tier roughly, unless there's like some special circumstances or anything like that, but or like bad matchups. But moving on to we have our first retrieval arc person, which is Kiba, which is right here. Yeah, so I do think that Kiba clearly, this the logic here is that he's at least one above this guy. Um, and I think that's really why I put uh, Chino Exams Kiba here, because I don't think Retrieval Arc uh, Kiba can hang with the people up here. They're pretty tough. So with Retrieval Arc, he does add like his Wolf Transformation was able, which was able to split Sakon and Ukon in half. It actually forced them to split in half, and they said if we had not, you know... Uh, divided ourselves then we probably would have uh, lost there so very impressive attack there but it's like a two use attack i think and outside of that he doesn't have much um in the retrieval arc he kind of got the short end of the stick fighting the strongest sound four member stated by orochimaru so he's at least on you know the chuni level but uh rounding out that tier we also have retrieval arc lee who's the one yeah so this is the one that's coming off of surgery and is slower. So when Gara shows up to the Kimi Mori fight, he said he you know he tells Rock Lee you need to sit back. I can tell that you've you've not fully recovered. Rock Lee says he hasn't fully recovered either. Um, so it's clear that he has to be at least like one tier below Rock Lee, which I believe I put in this tier, or like tune exams Rock Lee. So it makes sense that he's here. Um, he certainly does hold his own briefly against Kimi Mori. Uh, so I do think he deserves to be right there. But lastly, I'm going to be putting... I didn't even want to really have to do this, but where's Konohamaru? So Konohamaru, Konohamaru does beat uh, one of the Paths of Pain. And <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. Not very well. Uh, he does have... He, he is able to use Shadow Clones and Rasengan's. And I suppose he does defeat a Path of Pain. So maybe he's higher than that. I can't really justify that. But he does seem to be like the top of his generation since he's the only one getting like any type of spotlight um, in the story so I feel like he at least deserves to be kind of just like your average tuning um, if you if you want to debate me on this I really don't care about Kano Amaru like whatsoever so whatever but moving on into this high tuning tier we're starting with Gara and the tuning exam is Gara so uh, you know, as I said, Sasuke has a poor performance in the, you know, tuning exams, or at least in, before the finals. Um, and this, this version of Gara really encompasses the finals and the prelims before he, like, transforms. Um, like I said, he clearly terrifies both of his siblings. He kills Dosu, but um, he was transformed for that. Um, I think he scares he scares the shit out of Shikamaru. He scares the shit out of Naruto. Um, I think he scares Shino as well. I... <clears throat> It kind of just goes on and on, just like narratively. Uh, he's clearly one of the top people around. Like everyone's terrified of him in the first half of the tuning exams. So makes sense he's at least right there. Uh, moving on to the other person that was kind of like top dog. And but really he beats like tuning exams Naruto before Naruto uh, goes into the Nine Tails Chakra. He scares Dosu really bad with um, his Byakugan. Uh, just flexing it and then also with like rock lee rock lee said he needed to use uh the you know his five gates to beat neji or at least try to beat neji so not even like basely or like weightlessly could have thought couldn't even beat neji so that kind of makes sense that he would be above like for example uh tuning exams or force of death sasuke because you know you know we saw rock lee at the beginning of that exams kind of just speed blood sasuke anyway so it makes sense that uh, both Gar and uh, Neji at the beginning of the exams are clearly the top dogs. But speaking of Lee, he's also on this level. So, yeah, so training exams Lee, that just encompasses, like, you know, the gates as well, or weightlessly as well. It just keeps all of that kind of in mind. Um, clearly, he does almost beat Gara. Now, Gara does, it's kind of hyped up a little too much. Gara does, like, walk off on his own power after that. And seems just fine after taking all those hits from Lee. Now, of course, Gara is like the top gaining, top defense at that time. So, kind of just unfortunately, even though he didn't, ex you know, advance to the finals, he showed that he was more than worthy to be on that level. 
And it's clear that if he does tap into the gates, he does have a good shot at beating someone like Neji as well. Because Neji did seem pretty amazed during all that. And like I said, he did beat Sasuke, you know, right before the written exam. Um, and then also, he, he, he was about to beat Dosu, but then Zaku had to save him. And things of that nature, it, you know, it makes sense as these three are certainly on the same tier. Um, based off, you know, kind of how they interacted with each other. But then moving on to the retrieval arc, we have Shika Mario. Now, this is the same logic um, as with, like, Kiba with the tuning exams of the retrieval arc. Uh, this case is Shikamaru. He clearly gets a little bit better by the retrieval arc. Like he adds, um, he's shadow strangling jutsu. Uh, and he shows kind of like, uh, he kind of just has a better showing overall. He fights like a much tougher op opponent, but I'll get into that later. So just logically, I have to put him at least one tier above um, this Shikamaru does it doesn't necessarily mean that he beats like these people or, or anything i just feel like they're at least on that same caliber uh but moving on to choji actually so it, there's no tuning exams or like um <laughs> sasuke retrieval arc choji it just says choji part one uh this is going to be keeping in, into mind that he can go into his pills i'm not going to be putting all his pill states in there but he does uh defeat jirobo by himself he does have to use the red pill but even if we want to take the red pill away from him in his yellow pill it forces jirobo to go into his version 2 state and you know jirobo is going to be in this peak tuning level so much respect to choji for that even shikamaru kind of told the rest of the sasuke retrieval team that when they had doubts and choji winning shikamaru said he's really really he's probably the strongest of all of us he just has to believe in, in himself so really just kind of beating Jirobo, or at least, you know, Yellow Pill forcing a Jirobo to go all out is more impressive than really any of the things these characters did. Um, so I feel like comfortable putting him kind of in this um, tier. And this is where going to be, this is going to be like where a lot of the retrieval or characters end up uh, being. But anyway, as I was saying, retrieval art characters, Konkuro and Tamari are also on this level. Uh, yeah, there we go. So it's Samari, and then Conqueror is right next to her. So Samari shows up. She beats Taiyuya in version 2 with just like a one blade dance. She's able to like clear cut the entire forest. So very impressive stuff by her and kind of the same logic. She has to be at least one tier above um, her previous one. She could maybe be up here, but I just feel more comfortable putting her like um, kind of in this area because there's going to be some... Uh, people in this tier that I feel like are definitively stronger than her and the gap's not quite close enough to put them in, put her in that tier. Same with Konkuro, he does go and beat the strongest member of the Sound Forest Jedi by Orochimaru, but Sokken and Ukon were getting tired at that point and Ukon had to take over the main body and Ukon says, well, I'm not really used to this and that kind of leads to the, them getting trapped in one of his puppets. So it's kind of the same logic. He has to be at least one tier above because he clearly just gets better. Um, and he shows, I think he adds one more puppet um, and just clearly has a better showing. So I have to put him at least one tier higher. And then we get into uh, the last one in this tier, which is Drunk Lee. <coughs> uh, which is funny, we're actually really putting him at the same level as like Gates Lee. But it's a serious multiplier. It forced Kimi Mara to partially go into his version one uh, curse mark state. And it's clearly just a little bit better or a lot better than, um, you know, his regular kind of recovering from hot, you know, surgery state in the retrieval arc. So I feel comfortable putting him here. Like all these people in the retrieval arc held their own against sound five members in, in, in their own different ways and in, in, in their own different extents. But for that brief moment, he clearly was uh, doing very well, at least better than this Rockley. But <clears throat> Or at least he kind of like reached this level again for, you know, briefly while he was intoxicated. But moving on into the peak tuning tier, uh, I have the Sound 4. So they're, they're technically, I think their rank is tuning. But clearly, you know, narratively, these are the final bosses for all the kids in part one. Like this is the last arc where like, you know, Naruto's generation was heavily involved, uh, or at least predominantly involved. And... It's clear that they've got some things that kind of prove that they're on this level. So they actually do run into uh, two Jonin before like uh, the Sasuke retrieval arc um, team 
um, catches up with them. And they're able to beat two Jonin, but they do go into version 2 for that. So they do say they do have to rest for a little bit, and they kind of complain that they had to use version 2. But they say they did that because uh, they wanted to make it quick. Now, on the other hand, uh, after the Jonin wake up in the hospital, they say, well, it didn't really help. We were fatigued after coming off of a mission. So there's a lot of noise going on there, but it certainly feels like these are like the final bosses. And maybe, you know, Tamari, you know, easily beating Taiya, maybe that's just a mashup thing. But otherwise, Kitamaru and Neji tie um, Jirobo forces uh, Choji to, you know, self-sacrifice. Uh, use a self-sacrificing move, and then Sokken and Ukon really lose because they get two, they get two on one, basically. Back to the Chunin exams, we go back to really this exam final Sasuke that's really mostly going to be including against this fight when uh, Gara was transformed. The reason why Sasuke is above like all these people, for, so for starters, against Gara in the training exams, it's kind of downplayed how well Sasuke did. He basically, he whittles Gara's like sand armor away to the point where, you know, S Sasuke's starting to get fatigued, but even Conqueror on the stands is thinking like, what is Gara going to do? His sand armor is crumbling. Gara's on his knees at that point, and that's when Gara decides to try to transform him which is kind of an admit of defeat, and Sasuke didn't even have to use like a single jutsu for that. Um, and then even when Gara goes into his ultimate defense, Sasuke is able to penetrate that anyway. So, and not and not even stopping there, like we go into like a partially transformed Gara, and Sasuke is able to go at him and win his exchanges with just his Shidori. And he even takes a hit from like this Gara and gets back up too. So that's really way better than, you know, a lot of these characters. Like I said, Gara has to at least be above all these kind of like regular tuning exams people, which ends up putting him on the same, you know, place as a lot of these retrieval arc people. But at the same time, Sasuke was really uh, easily beating or immediate, medium difficulty beating uh, tuning exams Gara in the final examination. And then he took it a step up and was doing very well against a partially transformed Gara, he just ended up kind of like running out of chakra. So, uh, moving on, I didn't want to include, you know, exam finals Naruto because I don't think it's that much of a jump that it warrants uh, putting him there. I didn't want to include like uh, his kind of like chakra state, um, <clears throat> just because it just felt if you know it feels kind of re redundant that you know the QB amp he got against Neji, it just feels redundant putting it there. Uh, but this one I will put. So he's not really able to summon Gamma Boots in part one unless it's a life or death situation. So when Jiraiya pushes him off a cliff, he actually tells the Nine Tails, you need to give me Chakra or I'm going to die. And, you know, Nine Tails agrees because he's like, I don't want to die, so here I'll help you. It's the same case here. Uh, at the beginning of the fight, he tries to summon Gamma Boots and just fails. Uh, after Gara transforms into the One Tails, and is about to like sink off in Naruto, that's when he's able to summon Gamma Bunta. And it's not explicitly shown, but it just makes sense that he was having to rely on the Ninetales to do that because the Nine Ninetales all throughout part one was helping Naruto whenever Naruto was about to die. But even after, but even excluding that stuff, like the, you know, QB Chakra stuff, he's able to summon 2000 Shadow Clones after like a mental amp and it destroys like partially transformed Gara. So, you know, Gara was probably about to lose that before he, like, fully transformed. So we really have to give credit where credit is due. Um, so, yeah, he's clearly better than this Gara if we want to use that as, like, a reference point. But next to that is going to be Gara and his transformed state, which is... Where's Gara? Yeah. So, yeah. You know, all these people, like, Sasuke was doing well against Gara. He just kind of, like, ran out of Chakra because uh, he was using some earlier in the day. You know, Naruto was able to defeat this Gara. He did have to rely on some very special circumstances, but um, <clears throat> he still does do it. And it's just clear that, Gar you know, this Gara is clearly, uh, you know, a tier above this Gara. So I have to put, put him at least here. Um, but moving on to the next person, I'm putting uh, Rasengan Naruto, which is really like, uh, you know, Search for Tsunade arc Naruto. Here, I don't think he necessarily gets um, that much stronger or even stronger at all in like this version. He does add the Rasengan, and he almost defeats Kabuto, but it, it kind of shows that this Naruto is very rough around the edges because he doesn't even block uh, Kabuto's counter. So when Kabuto counters and like shuts off Naruto's heart, 
when he's hit by the Rasengan, it kind of shows that, you know, he's probably not Joni level at this point. Because really, Kabuto is going to win that. And there were some special circumstances that, special circumstances that allowed Naruto to get that Rasengan off. So, uh, it makes sense that I think that he still stays on this level. But rounding out this tier is going to be Retrieval Arc Neji. So, <clears throat> I do feel like there's no... He does... Neji defeats Kitamaru, and I don't even think Neji was like a good matchup for Kitamaru. I think, you you know, Kitamaru was actually kind of a nightmare matchup for Neji. And they still end up, uh, you know, killing both of each other, and Neji gets saved. But he's really the only one outside of like Naruto, Sasuke, and Gaara that's able to do this against like a sound five member. So like with Choji, he has to go into his red pill, which is very special. Self-sacrificing move. Um, Shikamaru loses to Taiyuya. Um, Sokka and Nukon beat Kiba, and then they kind of get unlucky when they're the, like, too tired to beat Konkuro, for example. But Neji is kind of different, and he's able just to take on one-on-one -on -one, one of these sound ninjas and not necessarily pull some like, type of like uh, crazy amp or anything, he just beats them in base, um, or at least, you know, ties with them, I suppose. So I feel like he's at least worthy of this level, and it makes sense that he adds, like, 128 palms, he kind of, um, does more, he does a lot more, or is forced to do a lot more than in the tuning exams, so I have to put him at least one tier above as well, but... So I did put, um, Final Valley, Sasuke, and that's gonna include, like, his Curse Mark version 2, in this kind of um, tier because I mean it's just kind of a logic thing he's clearly better uh, stronger than he was in the finals uh, tuning exam finals and I had to put you know land of wave Sasuke and tuning level because even you know in the bell test Kakashi is amazed that again he's able to use like fire style and things like that um, so really it's clear that Sasuke is kind of matching like um, these people at least and then I just kind of had to build off of that um, it's clear that, you know, this Sasuke was stronger than just, like, regular base. Tuning exams, Gara, and then finally, when he gets to that curse mark, he has to at least be one tier above. And I think it makes sense, like, he's one of the strongest kids we've seen. Um, other than, I suppose, like, Itachi that we know about, like, directly. That we really can confidently place in this tier list. Um, and there's a few other people that go with him, so... Uh, I'm just, you know... Ignoring that, just kind of like final version of Naruto. In part one, like he, you know, these two fight to almost a death. Sasuke almost also passes out, but he doesn't. So it's clear that these two are on the same level, considering how hard Naruto pushed Sasuke. So also we have Gara actually for retrieval art Gara on the same level as these uh, two as well. I think that Retrieval Art Gara is kind of uh, slept on, and it's very possible that he could maybe beat, you know, one of these two in a fight. Um, obviously, he doesn't have, like, the plot or the narrative going for him, but he's able to defeat, like, Sick Kimimaru, who was definitely stronger than any of the Sound 4. He was still, like, terrorizing Taiya, for example, when he showed up to the battlefield. But he's able to do things like um, flood the entire, like, um, <clears throat> surrounding area with sand, um, which is, you know kind of scale that we don't see from these two characters, like not even close. Um, really impressive stuff by him, and he's clearly kind of stronger, certainly than this version and probably than this version. And I feel comfortable with kind of putting him above all the sound for, considering that like, for example, Tamari is able to beat Taiyu with ease, although she has a good matchup, and then Conqueror does kind of a similar thing. Um, we kind of see like these kind of mid-tier like Genin are able to do okay or you know around okay against the sound four But Gar is clearly like way better than all of them And he really faces the final boss at the sound five and he did technically uh, only win because Kimimaru Died from his illness, but that's whatever. I think he's easily on this level now <clears throat> moving on to the last two kids who aren't in this generation we have uh, I'm just going to be doing, there's a Sharingan, you know, young Sharingan Kakashi there. I'm just going to be doing Team Made and So, and that's going to include, like, his Sharingan stuff. Um, or really, actually, no, we don't really know that much about how much stronger he got. When he got the Sharingan when he was young, we just know that he was able to add Shidori with that, but it's hard to quantify. But we know that this Kakashi was technically Jonin level. Um, um, I mean, that's technically, like, his rank 
Now I know it's kind of special uh, conditions because he was in a war at that time and they were using child soldiers, but you know, Kakashi was a prodigy and he's able to use basically any jutsu that Sasuke could use and he did end up defeating um, one of the Jonin after he got Okuto's Sharingan. So I think he has to at least be on this tier. I think anyone would agree to that, but maybe more controversially, I'm going to be including Kid Obito in this tier as well. Because he does kind of start fighting on, you know, the same pace as Kakashi. As soon as he awakens the Sharingan, he actually saves Kakashi from one of the stone ninja that was invisible. And they both team up in like perfect um, synchronization against one of the Jonin. Um, if you want to go kind of silly, uh, Kakashi is the one that trips in the cave while Obito doesn't. Or I think a rock is Kakashi. Um, maybe if you want to use that for evidence that they're relative, but I certainly think that, you know, I think his technical is, you know, he's technically a Chunin by rank, but by kind of by the end of his time in Team Minato, he's able to kind of fight on the same level as Kakashi, and I think that uh, it warrants him being here, and he's he has so much more experience, and has probably fought much more tougher opponents than most of the people here, so I feel comfortable putting him right there. But to re recap all the kids, um, it was definitely hard, kind of like when I was researching this, putting them in all the right places, but it definitely feels um, that, you know, Sasuke, Neji, Naruto, and Lee are narratively the strongest, and they have, I think they also have the stronger showings. So it makes sense why they're, you know, in this level. But as kind of like for this tier, this is like the tier, really just people that were able to cruise into the finals at least. And then kind of going into this, this is more like a definitely tuning tier. And these are people that were able to hold their own against like sound four opponents. So for example, I know people love Shino, but we don't see him, you know, fight any sound four opponents. And he ties with a weaker Conqueror. So I can't really justify putting him in this tier because of that. And this is kind of like, you know, sound four and above tier. Like these are the like the top, almost the top of the um, crop, I guess, if you want to rhyme like that. But like, for example, like, you know, these, this is like the final three fighters of the tuning exam finals. And then, you know, you have Naruto on the next arc and then you have Neji who was clearly stronger than this Neji. And then finally we have like the final, um, at, you know, the upper echelon of like all the kids. So like definitely Sasuke and Naruto narratively and just by their showings are the top kids. Gara has showings that put him um, on this, you know, tier as well, I think. And I think he kind of gets overlooked. Um, and then obviously Kakashi, the prodigy, who was technically a chonin by rank. And then Obito, who I, who I felt like kind of ended up catching up with Kakashi by the end of that mission. So I think all of this makes sense. Like I said earlier, uh, don't be afraid to comment if you feel like you have a different opinion or you just didn't understand what I said. Um, I'm going to be trying to get active in the comments explaining this, this is like the most cluttered, or at least I, the hardest to rank out of like all the tiers, I think, personally. So it's going to be getting easier for here and easier for me to explain. But moving on into, you know, other people that fit into this low choning level. We're going to be starting with Hinata. Um, really, let me just go ahead and get all the people. Uh, it's really all of Naruto's generation that just like did nothing in the first half of part two. So we're also going to be getting Choji and Shippuden. We're going to be getting, let's see, we're going to be getting Eno and Shippuden. We're going to be getting Tintin and Shippuden, if I can find her. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> we're, we'll just put Kiba in there because he's also going there. Um, and Shino and Shippuden. And Tenzin, if she wants to appear for me, there we go. Tenzin and Chippuden, and let's see, I think that's... Does that round out? I think that does round out um, everyone from that kind of like uh, area that I just put down. So really, these people just, they do nothing in the first half of Chippuden or like before the war. They do absolutely nothing that I can uh, like base my ranking on. I just feel like, you know... They're three years older, and I just, <laughs> I don't, their technical ranks are tuning, so I don't even want to put them that higher. Like, um, uh, let's see, all these people, they're technically, the highest they get is just regular tuning level, yeah. So I almost want to put them in, like, the peak tuning level or something, but it just, 
it just wouldn't feel right, I suppose, because they get so much older, and it it does appear that they do get stronger in some ways, I suppose. So I'm just gonna be putting them there. Um, if you want to put them in beat tuning, you know, be my guest. I'm not gonna argue about that. And then you know, rounding out the slow joning level, some people that are only joning by name, kind of similar to those two guys. Um, we have Ebusu. The the joning are all kind of like in a bunch here. If I can just find them. Uh, we have Ebi, Ebisu, who is technically, he's technically a special Jonin, that's his ranking, and he's only a special Jonin because he's that good of a tutor. So where is, there we go, yeah, Ebisu, literally just a tutor, he does nothing in like the pain invasion that uh, warrants him being any higher than the lowest level of his rank. And then we also have Genma, who was technically a Jonin, uh, he doesn't, I think he loses, yeah, he's one of the people that loses to the Sound 4. Um, and then also we have Hayate, uh, he was a product of the tuning exams and he ends up uh, getting killed by Baki pretty easily. So I can't really, he see, also seems pretty young so I can't really justify putting him any higher. But that rounds out that tier. The next tier we have, uh, we're going to be starting with like kind of like just regular Jonin. So we have like Alsama. Uh, a lot of these people are just kind of just be like kind of like the normal Jonin. They don't do anything like too special. I know Osma is going to be seem kind of strong for a lot of the people in here, but it's going to make sense because a lot of the people in this high joining tier are like war arc people or people that just have like special titles or do like uh, better things than just like your average joining. But we also have Kuranai in this tier. Let's see. We also have um, Baki in this tier. He's uh, you know the Sand Threes. There he is. Yeah, he's the Sand Threes. Um, <laughs> teacher we have Anko as well uh, and I'm just gonna I'm putting all these people I'm gonna do explanations because uh, uh, once I get there because really all these people are just short and sweet they don't really have I don't really have much to say about them uh, we also have Ioba now also I might seem low compared to these guys but once you see like who's on this tier it's gonna make sense why like the gap here is smaller than or sorry yeah smaller than the gap than it would be if he was placed here but uh, as for Karenai, she doesn't really do anything, but I feel like I have to place her above at least all these kids and these like teenagers. Uh, and then Baki, like I said, he easily defeats Hayate, so he's got to at least be like an average Jonin. And then Anko, who's a special Jonin. I don't, I don't remember why she's a special Jonin. Maybe it's because she's a Jonin Proctor. Uh, but she has some, you know, impressive things about her, like with her snakes and things. And she was leading the team that was tracking down Kabuto, and that was like a high stakes mission. Maybe they made her lead the team because she was familiar with Orochimaru and stuff, but she was leading people like uh, Yamato, and I think Sai was on that team as well. So kind of impressive she was the leader of that. Uh, same thing with Yamato. Uh, I feel like he never really showed what he was capable of. Like he just kind of showed that... He couldn't fight in between like uh, Orochimaru and Four Tails Naruto, which was fair. Uh, but otherwise, he just he doesn't seem to fight or do anything special other than just kind of restrain um, Naruto's QB Chakra, which is really the only special thing he can do um, when it comes to kind of uh, getting into the higher tiers. But uh, and then we also have Ioba. So I Ioba is known by Kabuto. So when Kabuto shows up to the Turtle Island, he's kind of assessing like who's he about who's who's about to fight, and he notes like Ioba is there. So interesting stuff. He um, he also kind of interrogates Hisume. He does a thing where like you know how uh, Ino's father is able to read minds by placing his head on like uh, people and tries to interrogate them. He's actually the person that does that against Kisame, so very interesting. He also summons crows to kind of save Asuma uh, when he was dying, so he's got some weird abilities, uh, but he doesn't really fight anyone or do anything special, so I have to put him in average Jonin at least. And then we also have, uh, kind of going back into kind of Naruto's generation, we have Neji, who was named a Jonin, if I can find, he's up here. So Neji was named a Jonin. He's the only person in the Leaf that was named a Jonin uh, for his age at the beginning of Shippuden. We also have uh, Tamari and Konkuro, who were also named Jonin. Um, clearly, they were kind of like top brass at their Leaf Village, even at that uh, age. And then we also have Sai. 
Bear's saw. It keeps getting hard because like it keeps more people I put reshuffles the whole thing. But Sai, uh, with kind of this block of characters, like we know, these three are just kind of named Jonin. They don't do any fighting, really. Conqueror gets destroyed by Sasori. Um, Sai gets destroyed by Sasuke. And it's really just all things that we expect, so I can't really justify putting them in these higher tiers. But the fact that they're put, the fact that they're named Jonin, whereas like these guys are named Chunin, I have to at least put them on this level. And I feel like if they're going to be named Jonin at the age, they got to be at least somewhat special. Uh, at least more so than like this low journey people and then moving on into Taka I'm putting Taka um, on this level and explain that once I place them if I can find them there we are so yeah Jugo that's also going to include like his version 2 state uh, Suigetsu they do some wild stuff but I feel like they I can't really just fight putting them on this tier or sorry this tier and we'll get to that but <clears throat> with uh, Jugo, you know, clearly he was killing like everyone at his prison. Now we don't really know how strong those people were, but he seemed to be like a menace. So he guess he was actually able to ward off the uh, full A tails when they were fighting Killer B. Uh, Killer B was just trying to rush them in his A tails form, and uh, Suigetsu gets into like this water monster form and starts stops the A tails straight in his tracks and then takes a tail beast bomb and lives. So, crazy stuff from him, but, um, you know, this tier is, like, that much higher. This tier is actually, like, that much. This is one of the biggest gaps so far uh, that I can't really just fight putting him in this tier, but he certainly is the closest, I would say. And then Karin, not really a fighter, but she does uh, prove her worth. Uh, she's able to be really equally as worthy as uh, these two to Sasuke. So I feel like she at least has to be put here. Now she might not be able to beat like a lot of these people in a fight, especially on this tier. But considering like her healing and tracking abilities, I think she's at least average Jonin for sure. Kind of just like a, you know, unorthodox case because it's hard to rank her because she's not really a fighter. But moving on into this crazy tier... I kind of put, I started this tier by putting just like part one Kakashi on this tier, and we can go ahead and put Zabaza as well. If I can find him. If I can find him. So Zabaza uh, and Kakashi, they both fight. Zabaza kind of gets the best Kakashi at first, but throughout the arc, Kakashi just seems to get stronger. I really think Kakashi was just uh, breaking off the rust in this arc and throughout part one, but it's clear that he's, you know, <laughs> narratively and kind of his feeds he's way better than like these kind of like average jonin for sure and all these people as well um and sabas is kind of the similar case you know he tried to be become kage himself and he's able to push kakashi like really really hard on the first arc so i feel like he's got to at least be there and then we also have haku i just saw her she was next to zabaza so yeah you know zabaza says that haku is stronger than him uh, which is very interesting, uh, but I guess everyone's that's always been weird to me, but it seems everyone just accepts it I also accept it. I guess it makes sense if you look into it But her speed is kind of insane for um, the kind of compared to the rest of her arsenal Because uh, she is actually able to surprise Kakashi um, And take that Shidori that was supposed to take out uh, Zabaza when Zabaza was held down by Kakashi's dogs um, So it kind of just proves that um, her speed is on that level of these two or even perhaps above it so i feel like she's got to be you know at least here even if it feels kind of weird still uh, and then i'm also going to be putting all the way back to haku fight naruto um this is kind of the case of a mental amp going into this as well but um this naruto actually beats haku like haku's um says it herself she kind of just gives up and says i cannot defeat you know this person um <clears throat> so i feel like this naruto has to at least be on this level and, you know, even, like, his aura was so strong that it was scaring both Kakashi and Zabaza. And that was actually what prompted Kakashi to, like, he said, he's I'm going to finish this up now. And then he tried, you know, uh, using uh, Fang Pursuit into Shidori. And then moving on to Kabuto. Uh, this is someone that's compared to Kakashi, like, several times in part one. So when Kabuto, when Kabuto do goes and, like, tries to kill Sasuke, uh, at the end of the Chunin exam prelims, while Sasuke is unconscious in the hospital... Um, Kakashi's really impressed by his ability to escape. I forget whatever jutsu he does, but he basically he uses a dead body um, to escape. 
And so Kakashi even says to himself, like, I think he says, like, I'm going to get phased out by the new generation or whatever. And he holds his own against, like, Tsunade at first pretty well. Um, Tsunade kind of tires herself out, and then he's able to kind of fight her a little bit. Um, pretty impressive stuff by him, and he's not, like, like I said, like he said, he's not, you know, a fighter first. Um, clearly kind of, like, on this level of Kakashi. Um, I think Jiraiya and Orochimaru both say that he's on Kakashi's level. So I feel like he's got to at least be on the same tier. And then next is going to be base guy, which I feel kind of iffy about, I suppose. Um, I mean, it's kind of tough because like all he can do is taijutsu, and I suppose... Uh, he doesn't do really prove to do much in base. Like, for example, against Kisame's 30% ch chakra clone, he just blatantly gets overpowered by Kisame at that fight in the Kazakaya retrieval arc. And then we don't really see him fight in base until the war arc, and I feel like he never does anything notable in base. He kind of keeps up, I suppose. Like, he goes at Obito with some nunchucks. But really, anytime he's really helping, you know, that team or the alliance, he's going into his gate. So I just feel like, you know, he's at this high joning level for sure. Like he's definitely very respected by several characters like Akashi and Itachi. But I just feel like it, he always has to get, you know, go into gates to really get uh, in the, you know, in this area. So I feel, you know, kind of iffy about him being there. We can talk about it in the comments, but moving on into some other, you know, Naruto's generation. I have Naruto and just regular Shippuden, like, um, I, I would say, like, Kaze Kage Retrieval Arc, um, that kind of thing, where it's, you know, Kakashi says that once he develops the Rawson Shuriken, he's, like, surpassed him, so I feel like I can't really put him in that part to Kakashi level, and part two Kakashi is going to be on this level, um, so I feel like I can't really put him on that level yet, uh, because of that and he really there's not too much for us to base this on he doesn't really do anything in the cosmic Kage retrieval arc he doesn't do much in the tenshi bridge arc either it's not until uh he develops our ross and cherik and then we actually he actually starts doing stuff in part two that we can really rank him off but i feel like he has to be you know as naruto he was above all these people in part one so i feel like he's got to be above them in part two as well and even like you know rasengan like where Singa Naruto was beating Kabuto, for example, even though uh, he did have some very favorable circumstances, I feel like he's got to at least be on this level by this point in the series. And that also brings us to Sakura in part two, uh, probably the biggest leap between two uh, subsequent versions in this list, possibly. Uh, but, you know, we saw, you know, she does fight with Chio, she keeps up with Chio against the Sasori. Now, of course, there's a bunch of special circumstances in that fight, but I feel like she kind of proves, like, she really rouses, wows Chio, and compared to these people, she actually does something compared to, like, these four. And, like, we saw, like, Asuma lost to, like, Hidan, even though he had a team going with him, uh, and we saw, like, you know, Jugo and Suigetsu, or, like, Jugo went against the Raikage, but Suigetsu lost to, like, Darwe. So I feel like I can comfortably put her around here. I don't think too many people are going to be arguing about that. Uh, then we go into uh, Shikamaru in, you know, part two, wherever he, there he is. So yeah, Shikamaru in part two. This is really just kind of like the proven, um, you know, Norch's Generation, Kona 12, Sound 3. These are the ones that have kind of proven, like these are here just because they're joining. These are just here because they're there. Uh, but these people actually do stuff like an early Shippuden that puts them on this level. Now, Shikamaru does beat an Akoski member, an Akoski member that I'm going to be putting in low Kage. But that's like, he had a very favorable matchup in that uh, encounter. Uh, and he had a bunch of intel when he actually beat him. So it just feels like uh, <clears throat> he deserves to be right here. When you see some of the people that are here and here, I can't really justify Shikamaru being on that level as well. But he certainly proves that he makes a big jump into Shippuden and kind of gets on this level, I would say. Uh, and then we have, let's see, we're going to be getting into, I'm just going to be putting all the, all the Kage Summit guards on this um, level. Because I feel like if you're, you know, if you're invited to the Kage Summit, you've got to be like, you know, two of the strongest in your village almost. And not exactly the two strongest Joni, but you know, you're respected enough that you're picked to go. 
But yeah, most of these people are just going to be down here. So starting with Darwi, uh, also C, I might as well just put them together since so it's the same village. Um, then we're going to be having the two root guys, Fu and Tarune, are also going to be on this level. Uh, let's see, put you there. Then Kuratsuchi is, I don't think they put Akatsuchi, I think that's his name. They didn't, I don't think he put the other guard on there, uh, but that's fine. He's on there, just for reference. Um, and then we also have Tamari and Conqueror, they're going to be up here. They're pretty close by, there we are. Yeah, it's Samari and Conqueror because they're also bodyguards. Um, not there. There we go. Conqueror. Conqueror is also on this level. And then you also have like Ow. I think that's how you say That might have really butchered that, but I think that's how you say his name. I'm not going to try that again. And then also Chojuro. And then I guess Mifune because Mifune actually leads one of the divisions and the army or the Shinobi Alliance. If I can find Mifune. You'd think he'd be right there. Yeah, and I think that... I think that rounds out all the kind of like Kage Summit bodyguards. So, it, like I said, it just kind of makes sense that, you know, if they're... These are like the top of their village, generally, they were invited to like protect their Kage at the summit. Like one of the highest uh, jobs the Jonin can do. So, <clears throat> and, you know, most of these people, they don't necessarily... They show like cool abilities, like these two certainly show like the strongest abilities for their clan uh, and they're in the Ombu and then Darwi you know he commands one of the units uh, C also it seems to be very useful kind of like a Karin type uh, Kiritsuchi she doesn't command a unit but she has like a bunch of jutsu that are impressive she does uh, some impressive stuff in the work um, and then we have Tamari and Konkuro who also do impressive stuff in the work uh, Konkuro leads like the recon team and Tamari was really like leading uh, all the Windstall users in the, you know, on the desert front. And then, you know, these two are also uh, <laughs> just, these two also have some impressive things about them. Uh, Chojo's, you know, he has one of the seven ninja swordsmen or seven, seven swords of the mist or whatever. And the Mifune also leads uh, one of the divisions of the Shinobi Alliance. So uh, it makes sense that they're all on this high Jonin level. I really, there's not going to be much people on this peak, jo peak Jonin level. But um, I had to make it just because, you know, the gap was too large to really put them on the same level as these people. But moving on into some of the Warwick stuff. So we're going to be putting Warwick Choji um, on this level. And we, well, really Warwick Shikamaru as well. I got to find Choji uh, too. There's probably, yeah, there you are. So Warwick Choji is kind of overlooked because um, I guess that's just like the most... Uh, forgotten part of like the entire of Naruto like when he was kind of popping off during that but <clears throat> I put Shikamaru here because he doesn't show any type of growth in the war personally that I've seen uh so I put him in the same tier as the Shikamaru and then Choji in the war um he actually kind of he after he kind of you know gained his conviction finally he says I'm taking over this battlefield and then it kind of goes off panel for a bit when when, when it comes back uh, the basically the fight is won before Obito shows up on that beach battlefront, and we see he's actually holding like uh, Kagazu in his hands. Now I don't think that necessarily be means that he beat Kagazu one on one, but it seemed like he took a leadership role at that point, um, and everyone around him is kind of like marveling at that. And I think like maybe Asuma or someone says in uh, Team Asuma that you know Choji was also also always had the potential to be the strongest, and now he's actualizing it. Uh, so really strong showing that he's taking a leadership position kind of like Tamari did um, um, <clears throat> compared to like all these people. I think he's very worthy of this rank of high Jonin. Uh, and then going into uh, rounding out this, I put the, you know, most of the seven ninja swordsmen in this, say for like Kisame and um, let's see, where did you put? There we go. So yeah. These are just seven ninja swordsmen. They have the title of seven ninja swordsmen. Uh, they seem to be killing like a lot of Jonin and Chunin when they're in the war, but they do, they're, they're definitely one of the weakest uh, reanimations. Like they go down the easiest and the fastest, I suppose. So I can't really justify putting them um, any higher than that. I think I also put Mangetsu. Yeah, I also put Mangetsu on this. And then, um, yeah, this guy also has. 
Samihata, but we never really see him use it. Uh, he doesn't get the chance to use Samihata, I don't think. Yeah, he doesn't get the chance to use Samihata when he's reanimated, but I think he's still one of the last Seven Edge of Swordman to get sealed anyway, so it's possible that he's on this level, because it seems like the person that wields Samihata is the strongest of the Seven Edge of Swordsmen. Um, even Suigetsu um, was kind of coveting that compared to like when he could have gone out and tried to get like the other uh, sword. Yeah, so really the difference between like this high Jonin tier and this Jonin tier is like these people either show like they get a lot of emphasis as Jonin and they show us like special stuff like these two or they just um, have very special titles or like get very special honors like all the you know Kage bodyguards or like your seven inches swordsmen uh, these people all do like you know strong things and then these people are generally uh, don't do that much but they certainly do a lot more than like these uh, Jonin level I suppose um, so yeah I think this all makes sense, but again, you know, we'll talk about in the comments if y'all have any discrepancies. But moving on to this peak Jonin tier, this is like a small one. I just had to make this one to make the tier make sense or make the tier list make sense. Um, starting with Kakashi in Shippuden. Yeah, because this is going to be the Kakashi that's able to use Kamui. So he, you know, clearly Kakashi at the beginning of Shippuden was like a step above part one. He was training over the time skip. And he just generally got better. I don't think he branches into the Kage level though, because I don't think he does that well against like Akatsuki members. So he is able to like Kamui off Daedara's guard or arm, but Daedara like his guard was down, um, and it's like like everything Kakashi had to do that. And then against Kagazu, uh, he doesn't really do that well. Like he's able to cheap shot him, but then after Kagazu gets up after that, um, Kakashi makes zero progress in that fight at all. So I can't really, I don't feel, really feel like he, I can put him in that Kage tier. But we move on to also, you know, Pain or Kakashi uh, seems to probably get like a little bit stronger. Maybe gets like a little bit more chakra because uh, he's he, he definitely gets a lot better at combo at this point. But it doesn't feel like substantial enough to justify him being put into that low Kage tier. Because, you know, once we see like who's on this low Kage tier, it's going to make sense why like Kakashi's not on that tier yet, at least not these versions of Kakashi. Uh, then we also have uh, Ross and Shurik and Naruto. Uh, I guess I forgot. Or no. Uh, yeah, we also have Ross and Shurik and Naruto, <clears throat> who Kakashi says, well, this Naruto surpassed me. Uh, he loses it right after this arc, the ability to use that, but we'll just say for this ranking that he can use it. Uh, he does defeat Kakuzu with it, but he needed to be saved because the first time the Jutsu uh, ends too early and Kakashi and Yamato had to save Kakuzu from like, uh, or sorry, save Naruto from being killed by Kakuzu. So uh, not really kind of the same tier or just kind of like the same thing as Kakashi, not able to beat Kakuzu, but, with, but when, you know, Naruto has a lot of help, he's able to do it. So this one's kind of borderline, but I put him here because I feel more comfortable uh, with that. But considering the people that are on this tier, of course. Uh, and then finally rounding this out is going to be Granny Chio. Oh man, she could be anywhere. <laughs> she could be anywhere. I got to talk and look at the same time. So she, I mean, she's very specially, uh, she's very clearly special in the Sand Village. Like she's the one that puts the Shikaku and Gara and things like that. And even in her old age, she's the one that goes out and accompanies like this elite um, leaf team to go find Gara, and she does very well against the Sori with like uh, Sakura's help and, and stuff like that. So I just feel like with it, you know with her kind of holding her own against like an Akatsuki member, uh, kind of puts her in this tier in my opinion, because really that's what all these people do almost. They kind of hold their own against Akatsuki members, whereas most of these people are just you know have very special titles or have very special. Uh, missions that they go on that proves like how strong they are. You know, she's going against an Akatsuki member and holding her own, even if she has some circumstances going in her favor. I have to respect that and put her like at the top of the Jonin uh, tiers. So that rounds out that tier, short tier. I just had to make it to make sense. Um, starting with the Kage or the low Kage tier, I put um, Orochimaru, Sika Orochimaru, which should be. Yeah, I guess no arms of Rochimaru, more like it. But yeah, so <clears throat> I'll go ahead and say that I'm putting like the regular Sonin uh, in the Kage tier. And so clearly this Orochimaru is just a tier below that Orochimaru, the fun that you exams. 
So I can't put him, I can't place him there. And once Tsunade kind of gets over here for her fear of blood, uh, she kind of he kind of loses to Tsunade in like a fist fight. So clearly not on that level, but still very strong. Like I guess with Kabuto's help, he's able to summon Gamma Bunsa, but or sorry, not Gamma Bunsa, Amanda. But even then, he's able to uh, kind of break a uh, drugged up Jiraiya's ribs when he kind of decides he wants to kill Naruto. He actually body slams. Uh, Jiraiya with his tongue and it basically I think it breaks one of his legs too or like it definitely it heavily damages Jiraiya so despite being in this very sick state he's able to damage Jiraiya uh, pretty badly which is not something I think you know people in this tier could do so uh, moving on into Kimi Maru and then this Kimi Maru is going to be like a he healthy version of Kimi Maru I've done a video on like uh, how strong I think healthy Kimi Mori would be, and I think I've zeroed it in enough where I can put him on a tier, and I think it is low Kage tier. Uh, so sick Kimi Mori would be more like on this tier, uh, for example, but healthy Kimi Mori I think is low Kage, because he was, you know, after the, you know, in the Sasuke retrieval arc, Orochimaru and Kabutsu were kind of talking about uh, Kona Crush, and they say, well, if Kimi Mori had been healthy, then the attack would have went smoothly. And they're not saying that ahead of time. They're saying that after kind of like analyzing what happened. They think that healthy Kimi Mori was that strong that they that um, he would have turned the you know pushed the needle um, for uh, the fight against Hirzen and would have Orochi Mori would have never had the Reaper Death Seal happen to him. So that says a lot. If he was able, if he was going to be able to stand his own uh, with those two you know first and second Okage reanimations and Orochi Mori against Hirzen of all people says a lot about him and I think it has to put him at at least low Kage level. Uh, it kind of seems like he was like the first heavy Sasuke so it makes sense that heavy Sasuke would kind of be in a similar tier as him. So spoilers for that but uh, going into the next person we see that's on this tier it's Gara uh, in the you know beginning of part two so uh, he kind of loses against Daedara. Uh, I know some people try to say, well, he was trying to capture Daedara, but Daedara was also uh, only using C1s directly against Gara, and it only took C1s to beat Gara. So not a very good look uh, for that, because um, I'll go ahead and spoil. I think Daedara, I put Daedara in the Kage tier. Uh, maybe the, I think, yeah. I just put Daedara in the regular Kage tier, so I can't really put them in the same tier. But clearly he's still Kage, because, I mean, he's named the Kage. Um, and it kind of makes sense when you see like some of the other people here, it's kind of like just, you know, people that are kind of barely, uh, Kage, but certainly, um, not Jonin level people. I think Gar is one of those people. Uh, another one of those people would be Hidan, which should be, there we go. So yeah, like I said, Hidan lost to Shikamaru, who's two tiers below him. Now, of course, Shikamaru had like full intel and was a good matchup for him. Uh, but generally, Hidan kind of is just one of those people with like a very high floor, but a very low ceiling. So uh, kind of what I mean by that is like if you don't have the capabilities or attack power to destroy them, uh, you really can't beat them. Uh, but, you know, with a lot of these people, especially in this tier, like, you know, there's no way he could ever touch Gara, for example. And then, you know, some of the definitely a lot of people in this tier and some of the people in this tier, there's no way he would be able to beat them. But a lot of these people, um, I think he can confidently beat just because he has the immortality and they just, these people just don't have the attack power to exploit that or even like the speed. And I guess he was able to very easily beat, the anime kind of exaggerated, uh, exaggerates it, but in one exchange, uh, he dons able to draw blood from Asuma. So it kind of shows how proficient he is. Um, but moving on to Heavy Sasuke, uh, who could maybe be a tier higher maybe uh i don't really want to include this sasuke because we don't really know how much stronger uh sasuke is after he he absorbs orochimaru we see him like destroy team seven but that's kind of expected so this is going to be sasuke and so that's going to include like all his curse mark versions and whatnot he does go against data is similar to gara and data has to try way harder but in this case um uh, Sasuke is a very good matchup for Data because of his lightning style. So, like for example, if Sasuke isn't able to see the nano explosives and isn't also able to run electricity through his body, he loses to C4. For for example, um, 
and really Dater was going to win at the end of that fight because he did have clay left whereas Sasuke had like no chakra left and Dater decided to rage quit life instead and Sasuke just ended up um uh, kind of getting plot armored after out of that because it was clear at the end of that fight he's not even able to activate his showing on at that point he should have had no chakra and he shouldn't have been able to escape so i feel like he has to be on this tier he certainly should be stronger than like naruto and kakashi at this point um and yeah i'd really this is really all based on like his fight against Daedara, where you know he pushes Daedara to like his limits but sasuke is a very very favorable matchup in that fight so he feels comfortable right there um, then we have May, uh, and you know, she doesn't really do too much, like for example, like even Karin is at the Kage Summit is able to dodge like her lava style, and then she doesn't really do that much in the war, like she does kind of work with the Rai Kage as like that team's offense. Um, Gana melts, you know, A Susano some, doesn't completely get outpaced by the Kage, but compared to the other four Kage, she has like absolutely nothing going for her other than her title. So I feel like I can't, I can't, I really can't justify putting her any higher. Uh, but moving on to Conan, and I feel like, you know, she's an Akatsuki member. She was, you know, this is ignoring like her like 10, like bajillion paper bomb trap because that was like very clearly special circumstances with a lot of prep time. But even like her basic uh, kind of, she does kind of uh, take her own hits when she does this, but she does... Um, trick Obito into trying to suck her in but she uses explosive tags during that and it actually blows Obito's arm off which is very impressive like even Suigetsu's blade um, wasn't strong enough to uh, damage Obito's arm for example uh, things like that so she's still a you know a Koski level person and during the you know uh, pain invasion of the leaf she's able to hold her own right against like of course she's not fighting the entire village but she's like surrounded by I think like the Abarame clan and she's like taking down other Jonin left and right but really her claim to fame is that being able to blow like Obito's arm off with just like uh, one of her normal attacks uh, certainly kind of underrated by some some overrated I would say but uh, I think she's got to at least be on this tier as an Akoski member who has also proved some of her worth. But moving on to some of the other Kage that are mostly unproven, we have uh, Raza. Yeah, so we put all the Kage down there. I'll remember that. So uh, Raza, he easily loses to Gaara, uh, in, you know, in the war arc. So not a very good look for him. But he was able to apparently routinely um, subdue shukaku like when you know garo would rampage as like a little baby he would you know routinely defeat shukaku which says a lot he does no magnet release so he should he should be way stronger than this Gara, just like regular sand um manipulation but uh that's really all we know about what he's able to do and he does kind of easily lose to Gara. although i think uh that was kind of just like time constraints with the plot but i can't justify putting him any higher than that uh, then we have Hanzo, which I hope is put, yep, put right there. Um, because he's the leader of the Rain Village for, I guess, two world wars, I think. Or, yeah, I guess two Shinobi world wars. What, <laughs> great Shinobi wars, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I have to put him at least there. Now, he does, a pay, he, he maybe he defeats, like, the young Sonin, but even that Sonin, like, for example, Shinade doesn't have like her mitotic regeneration at that point i don't think uh it's a weaker sonin and maybe they had always already been fighting earlier in that day that scene where he's like beating the son he's never really clarified it's it's honestly probably a retcon uh, he loses to mifune but mifune uh in that case it was kind of a battle of conviction and you know both of them kind of agree like oh, i lost my conviction so my blade ended up um, becoming dull and that's how uh, Mufune. Mufune is able to defeat him. We see Pain destroys him and kills him. That's how, that's his fate. Uh, can't blame him for that. But otherwise, you're the leader of a small village. I feel like you gotta at least be like low Kage level. Maybe he's peak Joni level at the lowest. But moving on to the other Tenchurikis. So let's see. All right. Yep. Yeah, we put all our Tenchurikis together. Good. So these are mostly unproven. Uh, people, but we did see in the new Minato manga that Roshi and Han were perfect in Jirikis, which I don't think we knew for certain before that. Uh, let's see, yep, yeah. and then Fu, and I think that 
rounds out. Does that round out that? No. We still got uh, Yagura and Yugito. Yugito. Um, so with these uh, people, uh, we see that Yugito is able to use uh, the full two tails. We see that Han and Roshi are able to use their full tailed beast in the Minuto manga. Uh, we don't see, I, I think we see in filler, uh, I didn't watch that. We don't see him do anything in canon. We don't see them do anything in canon. We know that he can go, you know, straight into the, you know, three tails. But <clears throat> kind of going into that tailed beast isn't that impressive for a Kage uh, level shinobi. So like I, like I said, Raza is able to, you know, routinely subdue the one tails. Which may be the you know weakest tail beast, but still, um, it's not that impressive considering like some of the people that are on this tier. Like for example, um, Daedra is able to take down like the three tails uh, and things of that. You know, Kakuzu and Hidan are able to defeat like Yugito with the two tails and things like that. It's not that it's not as impressive as you would think. Kind of being able to turn into like a tail beast because it does turn you into like a big target. For example, like. You know, B really almost lost that fight against Sasuke because he because it allowed Sasuke to you know use Amaterasu on him. It can be a disadvantage turning into like a giant monster. But yeah, just because we know that most of these people are perfect jerkies now, uh, I can't justify putting them on Kage level because a lot of those people on the Kage level defeated Tailed Beast or kind of proved they were able to defeat Tailed Beast or something of the sort. So I can't place them just because of that. But they did show some impressive things when um. At the beginning of the Obito versus like B and Naruto fight, they're actually fighting in base, and we see they're able to do some pretty impressive things. Like, you know, they're not really significantly damaging the two, but they were able, like, as a team, to kind of uh, uh, make Naruto and B panic, and they had some interesting attacks that seemed to definitely bother uh, those two. So we have to put respect on that. I think if these, you know, six as a team were able to take on B and Naruto, it's got to at least put them on the low Kage tier, because, like, let's say, if you want to take six of these people, like, any six, do we really think Naruto and B are going to be struggling that hard against them? I don't think so, but... Now, into the Kage tier, I kind of base this off, or starting off with, to the Sonin. I don't think that, you know, Chin Exam Zurechimaru is on this tier. I'll explain that when I get that, though, but certainly, uh, base Jiraiya and... Uh, not base Jiraiya. Uh, Jiraiya, I'm not doing stage mode Jiraiya, I'm just keeping in mind that he's able to do stage mode. I think one of the drawbacks of his stage mode is that it takes so long to get into, and I think that should just be held against him, because, you know, all, all abilities in the show have risk to it, I suppose. Uh, same with Tsunade's uh, mitotic regeneration, like, she's able... Uh, that also can backfire on her, where she just, like, passes out. I don't think, like, Warwick Tsunade is specifically, like, a whole tier above, like, uh, Tsunade before that point, so I'm not going to be putting, I think it just said, like, 100 healings of Tsunade, so I'm not going to be putting that Tsunade on there, and this, remember, this is Jiraiya with the idea that he's able to go in stage mode. It just takes him a long time. Uh, then there's also some other people here. Uh, of course there is. Why am I saying that? But we have Edo Tensei Hashirama and Edo Tensei Tabirama in part one, where they were clear, yeah, versus Hiruzen, technically. And let's see, you're also going to be right there. Yeah, so these two are able to at least bother Hiruzen. I'll go ahead and say the Hiruzen's in the high Kage tier. Working together, they're able to, you know, definitely wear down Hiruzen a lot, and it forces Hiruzen. Uh, Hiruzen's able to land some explosive tags on him, but because they're immortal, uh, he it forces Hears and go into Reaper Death Seal, but even you know even ignoring like all the uh, Reaper Death Seal stuff and immortality stuff, uh, these they're both of these guys Jutsu's were definitely bothering Hears and like a lot, and all the Kage or sorry all the you know Ambu that were watching were amazed by both of these performances, and so I feel like they've got to at least be on this Kage tier because a lot of these people are kind of like low level Kage. Uh, that aren't that proven, whereas these two were seem to be very proven if they were bothering uh, old man Hirzen. So, moving on from that, we have Sasori and Daedara. Now, I don't subscribe, I've already said this on the channel, I don't subscribe to the idea that Sasori is stronger than Daedara. It's just because that one time Daedara was trying to tell Kakashi and Naruto, well, Sasori is stronger than me, so uh, Kakashi, you better go help uh, Chiyo and Sakura. Uh, it's very clear that, you know, Daedara smirking during all that, 
um, that he's just saying that because he's trying to trick uh, Kakashi into you know letting letting him have Naruto for himself. So I definitely think these two are very neck and neck. Definitely the same tier for sure. Uh, like I said, um, you know. Sasori really loses because he goes against like his absolutely nightmare matchup and they have prep time and antidotes for example and he wasn't even taking these two seriously for uh but he does possess like the third Kaze Kage who was the strongest Kaze Kage um who's also on this tier so I have to at least put him on the same tier as him um certainly stronger than like these weaker Kaze Kages uh, for sure because of that third Kaze Kage stuff and then with Dater like um like I said, he's able to uh, almost defeat Sasuke before Rage quitting. That was just like a really bad matchup. But he's also able to, to capture the Three Tails. He's able to easily capture Gara, which is using, well, not easily, but he's able to capture Gara very limited and only using C1. So I feel like he's got to at least be a tier above Gara. Um, and even stuff like in the War Arc, like he's able to use uh, one of his explosives, able to flip over Turtle Island. And then also, like, Heavy Sasuke didn't even want to try and fight Orochimaru until he was, like, you know, bedridden. So that kind of gives him pr some props as well. And kind of like I said, I think that Chunin exams Orochimaru is on this tier. So after he loses, like, those Edo Tensei, these two Edo Tensei, I feel like he goes back to, like, his regular Sonning tier. I think that, was, that Edo Tensei really gave him an edge over his fellow Sonin, so I feel like he's comfortably right here. He was gonna fight Sasori, he scared the shit out of Sasuke. Um, so I feel like he deserves to be right there. He also deserves to be right there. Um, maybe may controversial, maybe controversial for some, I don't know why. Uh, a lot of people think this character is really cool, so they like to overrate him. I've got no problem with Kagazu personally, um, but I don't feel like his uh, showings are as strong as Sasori and Data are certainly not his ceiling. So like I said, he does lose to Naruto. Uh, of course, Naruto did help help from Yamato Kakashi. Uh, gives Naruto like a second try to defeat him. But he still loses to, he almost loses to Naruto the first time as Jutsu just fizzles out. And then he loses to Naruto in their second interaction. So not very impressive stuff. Like he does take down the two tails, I suppose. But there's just not much... Uh, to really base off of him being much stronger than like Sasori or Dater. I just don't see it. I don't see him being a tier above them. You know, maybe he is and he just didn't get to prove it because he did kind of get shafted in the, at the end of that arc. But I just don't see Sasori or Dater uh, uh, losing to this Naruto They're like at all, even if, even if Naruto has some help there. So I feel like, you know, this is pretty comfortable right here. You know, like I said, this is kind of like the unproven Kage or like the very weak Kage. Kagazu is certainly uh, kind of like your average Akatsuki member. He's got to at least be on this tier. Um, which also kind of moves us into Sasuke. Uh, Taka Sasuke, specific, specifically the one that fought uh, B. Um, I'm just going to be using this one because that's like the final version. You know, trying to keep this list efficient. So this Sasuke is able to defeat, you know... The second strongest tail beast, uh, way stronger than any of the other tail beasts, other than Kurama. Uh, but even then, uh, this the ability to use Amaterasu is just way, you know, very strong, and it's very clear that he's above Heavy Sasuke once he awakens, like um, Amaterasu. So he has to be at least one tier above this uh, Sasuke. And then next, I'm gonna have B, and that's gonna include like either of his versions or like his full A tail transformation version. Um, you know, obviously Sasuke had to be, you know, he had to be revived like twice during this fight, but this is like, you know, the final, Sasuke was getting stronger, like his Mangeku was getting stronger as that fight progressed, and by the end he does technically beat B, and B kind of gets lucky because Sasuke cuts off one of his tails and allows B to substitute, and B even says after that fight, that's the strongest person I've ever, I've ever fought. So, I think that kind of helps put more weight into Sasuke being here, um, as for B, he kind of gets destroyed by like Kisame, and Kisame is going to be in this tier. And there's other people in this tier that I think that are just like, you know, flat out stronger than B. So I feel like I'm pretty comfortable with, with him being here, Samihata or not. He doesn't even use Samihata to its fullest potential like Kisame did. So I feel comfortable with him being there. Then we have, next we have both the Raikage. And I guess there is debate over like, you know, who's stronger or if they're like even in the same tier. Like I'm sure, you know, a lot of people think their Raikage is like a whole tier above A. I don't necessarily 
uh, subscribe to that. Certainly, A has some things going for him. So, like, he does have that 10,000 Shinobi feet. He does have the ability to uh, use his one finger spear hand. But there's not, they both kind of get outdone by KCM1 Naruto. So, like, when uh, KCM1 Naruto kind of outdoes A in a speed test, you know, A kind of admits, well, you seem strong enough to kind of hold your own, and who am I to tell you what to do? And then, you know, when Naruto faces him in KCM1, uh, he he's able to he I guess he doesn't beat him in KCM one but he does go into stage mode and then beat him with a shadow clone even though this is Edo Tensei third Reich Kage I don't think that the nerf was that strong to you know take him down a whole another tier or something so I can't really justify the third Reich Kage being like high Kage tier just because of that ten thousand Shinobi feet uh, the fourth Reich Kage certainly has proven that he's able to take on like the a tails so like for example the third eye Kage and the a tails were kind of like rivals like they fought, fought to exhaustion that's how he got that scar on his chest but like with um for example when the fourth eye Kage fully powers up and he goes at kcm naruto trying to escape uh killer b doesn't seem to really feel confident that he can do anything before that killer b is kind of like challenging you know a and once a fully powers up uh b's like well <laughs> Naruto's gonna die, right? And even Karin says, like, you know, Fourth Raikage has, like, Tail Beast levels of Chakra, which further supports kind of, like, the idea that these two are, like, rivals. And then I feel like these two are just rivals because they have, like, the exa exact same arsenal. And I don't think that their, you know, feats and statements are that much different that I can put them on a different tier. Donzo is also on this tier. Uh, now, of course, I'm gonna go ahead and say that, you know, Kage Sen with Sasuke is on this high Kage tier. And although they, they do push each other to like their absolute limits, uh, Donzo had like a way better matchup because he has like crazy endurance, whereas like that version of Sasuke's endurance is kind of lacking compared to the rest of his arsenal. So I can't really put um, Donzo on this high Kage tier. He doesn't hasn't done anything that really separates him from like anyone here. Now certainly he's stronger than all these people. Like I said, that's kind of like the weak weaklings of the Kage. But with these uh, people, I feel like he fits. He's also kind of, was kind of like a half rival to Hirazin, like, you know, as he said himself, I'm always, you know, falling behind Hirazin and things like that. Uh, never could catch up to him, and Hirazin's in this tier as well, so I can't justify putting him there. Um, and just like I said, he loses to, you know, someone in this tier, despite having, like, one of the best possible matchups possible. So, I feel like he's pretty safe here, I don't think anyone's going to argue that. Uh, after that, I have Kinkaku and Ginkaku, which should be at the bottom here. This is, yeah, this is going to include, like, their version 2 cloaks as well. I've talked about these guys, like, a few times on this channel, obviously. Very overlooked, uh, power scaling-wise, just because, like, no one really cares about them plot-wise. But, uh, dang, I wanted them to be together. So, oh, wait, no. So, yeah, um, they're, they, you know, when Kinkaku, no, yeah, it was Ginkaku, I think that goes into version two and actually uh these names might be switched up i think kinkagoo is the gold one whatever so i think kinkagoo goes into his version two state and he just completely destroys like the entire uh beach battlefront uh they actually had to send in like an entire reinforcement so he's taking on a whole army by himself and the army that he was fighting that was what 80 thousand strong you know divided by five so he's probably taking down like at least 10,000 at that point because that was getting light into that battle or something. So very impressive stuff by him there. They were able to defeat Toby Rama, for example. So it kind of just shows like how strong like their, you know, version 2 states are. And like I said, one of them destroys like an entire army in his version 2 state. Team Asuma does defeat uh, one of them um, and Dar Darui defeats the other, but like... That stuff, you know, the first day of the war, like, a lot of those reanimations just got um, uh, shafted so hard. Like, we have to, I, I personally just, like, wreck on that stuff because it just messes up the entire power scaling. There, like, there's no way that, you know, someone like Shikamaru, Ino, you know, and Choji could defeat an entire army like Kinkaku was doing. Or anything, like, <laughs> similar to that feat. So, we have to put respect on their name, but certainly I can't put them any higher than that. Um... Because I think that, like, you know, these people could solo an army, for example. Like, even Hirazen, when talking about, like, tuning exams, Rorikishimaru was like, 
you know, Orochimaru is strong enough to defeat like a small nation. And we know Sasori defeated a small nation, for example. Uh, kind of defeating like a whole army of like the world uh, shinobi forces. Uh, it's got to be like small nation level. But <clears throat> moving on to some of the last people in this tier, I'm going to have Gara in the War Arc, which should be up here actually. It's getting easier to find people. So Gara in the War Arc. He obviously is a little bit stronger than, you know, this Kara, so I have to at least put him one tier above. But he's able to do things like, for example, uh, he does defeat Raza pretty easily, so that kind of supports him being on this tier as well. But also, he's able to go against Gengetsu with a lot of help. Now, he does need to use, like, Raza's Gold Sand to, uh, you know, eventually seal the deal. But he's the one who's leading the way against uh, someone that's going to be in this tier. So very impressive by that. He needs some help to defeat someone in this tier, but still impressive. Certainly should be a tier above like early parts of Ugara. It just kind of makes sense. So uh, that's where I think he belongs. And then after that, I have the third Kazekage. Who, even though he was stated to be the strongest Kazekage that was at the beginning of Shippuden, and as I said, you know, Gara got a tier stronger by then. Uh, is yeah, you're going to be down there. So, Gara got a tier stronger by then, so it certainly makes sense why this, you know, Kazekage is stronger than this Kazekage, but maybe Gara kind of catches him by the end, I don't know, we don't know much about this character. This is the highest I can really put him realistically, uh, you know, at least one tier above the other Kazekage at the time of that statement. So, moving on after that, I have uh, Shisui. He's gonna be, uh, he could be anywhere. Um, no, he's not there. So Shisui, you know, I, he, obviously someone we don't know much about, sadly. Uh, someone that should probably be explored in the future. But of course with his Koto Matsukami, uh, that's like able to, was designed to overwrite uh, Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. So the Jutsu was, we, when, you know, when Itachi was using that crow that has Shisui's eye in it, uh, it was supposed to go ahead and just brainwash Sasuke if Sasuke had Itachi's eyes. It was programmed to activate when it saw Itachi's eyes, which was supposed to be in Sasuke. If that was the case, Sasuke would have the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan, which means we have a Mangekyo Sharingan Genjutsu uh, overriding an eternal Mangekyo Sharingan user. Which is crazy stuff, but... That's something that can only be used, I think, once, it was once out, like, every seven years and once every ten years by uh, <coughs> Shisui. So, I can't put that much stock into it, but what I can put stock into is that he has uh, Dual Mangekyo Sharingan, which means that he's able, this entire time I'm just looking for him, <laughs> um, but he is able to, you know, he should be able to use his Susano. I think we've seen that in, like, uh, filler or, like, one of the games. So starting with the high Kage tier, I think we're going to put the first kind of high Kage dude uh, to start it. And we have Hiruzen. As I said earlier, I think that Chunin Exams Orochimaru is also on this level. He's going to be right there. So, you know, with these two, there's like, like the stuff where like how it does like, well, Hiruzen's the strongest of the five Kage. Now this was like years and years before the Kage summits, lots of retcons. At that time, Hiruzen was supposed to be stronger than like Hashirama, for example. So that could have easily also been a retcon, but his performance is still impressive enough um, that I think that he deserves to be on this high Kage tier. So uh, even like Orochimaru needs to have like insane prep where he has to summon two people that are Kage level. You know, maybe these two are maybe low Kage level, and then he also needs this low Kage level person and himself to go and fight Hiruzen. So it's like four people on the Kage, you know, spectrum that Orochimaru felt he needed. And even though he didn't use Kimimaru, um, it did force, it did take basically everything out of Orochimaru and Orochimaru was going to eventually die from his wounds from this battle if he hadn't mastered immortality at this point. So I feel like, you know, Hiruzen has to be on this level where he's just kind of like above the Sanin uh, for sure. Because uh, even like at the end of that fight, after these two uh, reanimations are dealt with, here's an, you know, he basically babies Orochimaru 
and their like Kenjutsu combats and then instantly goes in the Reaper Death Seal. And it's really just because because he's so old and so tired at that point that he's not able to seal the deal. And I just feel like if you really want if you want to, you know, put stock into like the strongest Kage statement, then he's got to be stronger than Tsunade, A, um, Gara. I, well, Gara wasn't Kage then, but you know what I mean. Uh, he's got to be stronger than like several of these people here that we know for sure and that, you know, definitely puts them on this tier. Orochimaru also being here because he put, you know, he pushed Heroes into the point where um, even though he didn't, um, even if, even though he had to, you know, use the Reaper Death Seal because he wanted to never have these two summoned ever again, these two were still like bothering the hell out of him anyway. So uh, we got to respect Orochimaru for that. Now moving on to jumping way forward uh, in the timeline, we have, oh man, I forgot about Four Tails Naruto. So, Fort Sales Naruto, uh, he and Orochimaru, they kind of stalemate because neither of them can really damage each other. So, I'm going to put that right, yeah, right next to Orochimaru, kind of makes sense. He also almost kills Jiraiya. Don't really know exactly how Jiraiya subdued this Naruto. Maybe he used one of those chakra tags that subdues his chakra. Uh, who knows? Is there any other versions I'm missing up to this point? No. Uh, yeah, I don't really feel like doing either of these versions. I just feel like doing version, uh, you know, that... Four Tales Naruto version because it's really the accumulation of those two versions. Uh, but moving on to Sage Mode Naruto, uh, it's kind of like he. There's a lot of narratives that kind of say that he's like surpassed Jiraiya, for example. You know, once he goes into Sage Mode, and I think his performance against you know Pain is better. Now, of course, uh, he does have some intel, but he's able to destroy five paths of Pain before the Diva Path. And I think kind of like the final piece of evidence for him being at this level. Is that, you know, Zetsu sees both. Uh, I guess Zetsu sees Sasuke fight B and he sees Naruto fight Pain, or this Sasuke at least, and Zetsu says that, you know, Naruto is stronger than this Sasuke. So I feel like he's got to be at least a tier above. Uh, I don't think too many people will argue with me on that, uh, which means that also uh, Kage summit Sasuke has to be on this level too. I mean, that's the classic, you know, what if versus battle matchup. These two, uh, like I said, Sasuke is able to defeat Donzo despite like overwhelmingly bad matchup in that situation. Um, and it just kind of feels like, you know, Sasuke, he was pushing Daedara with a good matchup. And at this point, like he's adding like uh, all those Mangeku abilities. He's got, he's got to be stronger than Daedara at that point. He's got to be stronger than like, like Orochimaru as well. Uh, he's even like the fourth Reich Hage when, uh, or, you know, Sasuke first uh, activates his full skeleton to snow. The fourth Reich Hage just kind of looks in shock and has like no answer for that, like whatsoever. So I feel like he's got to be on that tier as well. Uh, and then we go into next, we have Kisame. And that's going to be, you know, I'm just going to be doing this version of Kisame. You know, I'm just keeping in mind that he has the ability to uh, merge with Samihata if he feels the need. But. You know, as we saw with Kisame, he's able to baby B. Now, of course, that's a very favorable matchup for him, I suppose, because B was being dumb and he has a lot of chakra. That's perfect for Kisame. But uh, even then, he's able to, it seems like he's able to easily defeat, I think it's Roshi as well. So not much else I can really say about Kisame. He doesn't have really that interactions, like fighting-wise. I suppose he did take a hit from Seven Gates guys like Hiradora. And lived after that, and he's even able to like put up a fight after taking that hit, which is kind of insane durability wise for like a Hasi level uh, people. Because like for example, uh, guys here Adora was able to possibly destroy like Madara's full body suits. So no, we see at uh, one point I think right before the Ten Tails emerges, uh, guy uses here Adora on um, Madara, and Madara's full body suits so no just goes flying, and then we just don't see it again after that. So. I don't know what's up with that, but the fact that he's able to, you know, survive that and like all the people on Turtle Island had to like brace for impact. That's how strong it was, you know, ter in terms of scale, that thing was like <laughs> pretty ginormous for an Akoski level member to survive. So I feel like that also kind of warrants him being on this high Kage level, being able to survive something like that. But uh, moving on from him, we also have Onoki. And then we have Onoki, who was basically kind of the leader of the five Kage uh, against Madara. Um, so, for example, I don't think people really talk about this much, but when Madara summoned his 25 wood clones and they all had full body Susanoo, uh, his particle style is what destroys all those Susanoo. 
And I think even before that, uh, when all the, you know, all the Kage are about to pass out from uh, monitors using one of those uh, wood style jutsus that's like, uh, uh, kind of like paralyzes like all the other Kage, he's the only one that gets up and like destroys all of that with his particle style. Uh, generally, his particle style seems to be like a lot stronger than any of the hacks that these people have. He has some other crazy feats too, like for example, he's able to pick up Turtle Island with one hand with his like uh, lightning boulder or feathered boulder jutsu or whatever, uh, which is really impressive because like I said, you know, Turtle Island is probably like 10 tails level in size. Uh, so, you know, kind of think about what he could do to like any tail beast. He could either, he could vaporize it if he wanted or he could just like pick it up and throw it if he really wanted because of his light, you know. He's able, his ability to, you know, lighten things. But yeah, because he was able to kind of lead the Kage against Madara so well and so consistently, I think he's got to be on this tier. And his feats also kind of support that. But moving on to his predecessor, Mu, he was in the same place. Uh, yeah, he's kind of overlooked because I guess he's not as important to the plot. But he basically has the same, a lot of the same abilities as Onoki. He can't heaven or lighten things, but he's able to turn you know completely invisible and he's able to split himself in half so he's actually hit by uh, KCM1 Naruto's Rasengan he splits himself in half and then hides and then that's how Mater uh, Kabuto is able to summon Madara <laughs> so I definitely feel like uh, these two and they also these two also go at each other with like particle style and they kind of like cancel each other out and even Mu was like well you, you really need to defeat me because uh, only a particle style user can fight a particle style user and I could easily destroy this entire army with particle style if I wanted so and it's not like Ono can contest that so it kind of supports the idea that these are like the top dogs when it comes to Kage level people uh, and then we also have uh, another kind of overlooked character which is Gengetsu uh, he and Mu fought to the death they both died in their final fight so I can't really place him any lower or higher like he's right next to this dude i suppose and he is one of the last uh he does really does a number on like the shinobi alliance he lasts longer than the red kage for example and really uh i just have to put him here because he's, he fought me to the death i suppose so and then rounding out this list for now is going to be seven gates guy should be kind of in the middle of all this but seven gates guy like I said, he's able to defeat Kisame, almost nearly kill him <coughs> with his um, uh, Hiradora. And like I said as well, he was also able to possibly destroy Madara's full body Susano with his Hiradora. So really his ability to defeat Kisame, even though he's like the perfect, uh, Kis or I guess, you know, that's a nightmare matchup for Kisame. Uh, he's still able to defeat him, which we have to give him props for that. I feel like that puts him on the same tier uh let's see yeah so i'm not rating warwick guy because uh it doesn't there's no really evidence that he got any stronger from like uh ship it in or per one to the warwick at least in base i've got to at least put um you know seven pa guy with kisme though since they're so like intertwined and now we get to like the upper echelon of like power in naruto uh it's gonna get you know the lists are starting to get more slim here so we're getting close to the end but for the demigod tier, I'll explain that because that's the only ranking uh, on this tier that you know isn't officially like a you know a title like God of Shinobi is a title. This is short for God of Shinobi, so we you know we six pass. You know people are, but demigod I feel like kind of bridge between like the God of Shinobi and like just like the strongest of their villages. Um, so clearly, like God of Shinobi, like you know is kind of explained as like someone who could destroy the entire world so like we you know when the five kage and like the general villages hear that you know madara might be back they all panic because they think they know that madara has the ability to destroy the entire world and certainly you know madara proves that when he drops you know two meteors on the shinobi forces that army and then he just babies the five kage so you know those are gods of shinobi demigods are somewhere in between where i feel like you could probably put vast armies in front of them and they can either beat them or just do like uh, or you know do massive amounts of damage for them and they can definitely there's a big jump between a high kage and a low demigod we're kind of getting to the point in the tier list where like 
you know, the jumps in power are kind of uh, much smaller here than they are here. Like a god of Shinobi is way higher than a demigod, whereas the gap between these two is lower than, you know, the gap between these two. But I think that kind of explains it, you know, these are all just kind of names that I put next to the tiers. Names don't necessarily matter uh, that much, but I feel like starting with Itachi, which is over here. So I'm not doing it on we Itachi before I the manga because Sharingan because we don't really know. Uh, much about that other than he just has the title of Ombu at a really young age. But for this Hitachi, uh, he's able to basically baby, you know, Orochimaru with just his base showing on, right? So, not, you know, once I start talking about more of these people, uh, you know, this ranking is going to make more sense. But considering that he's able to just baby someone with, like, one of his weakest jutsus in this tier, or maybe this tier... Uh, it definitely supports the idea that he's on this level and even like Kisame seemed to have you know a great amount of respect for him He was also like a tier below him. So I feel like you're safe there uh, I think a lot of people in these tiers, you know I can really only explain once I place a lot of them. So bear with me here before y'all like start typing furiously uh, Whereas pain at I'm not doing all the individual paths because that just like kind of gets complicated very hard to scale like the individual pass considering one of them lost to Kanaomaru but uh, as for pain as a unit um, certainly we saw that you know three of them were able to like really make Jiraiya worry and then six of them were able to body you know Jiraiya which is someone on that tier uh, he's also able to like he, he basically destroys an entire leaf village by himself which is kind of like what i was saying a demigod should be able to take on basically an army and probably win or do like massive amounts of carnage and with pain here uh he also has his planetary devastation which almost restrained you know half the nine tails which was like the strongest tail beast in the world at that time and how could i forget uh once the diva path regains his power he's able to very easily defeat uh sage with naruto like very very easily which also kind of supports like itachi's a able to easily defeat this guy pain's very easily able to defeat this guy it kind of just shows that they're on this big gap the in tears and brings them into the low demigod tier uh moving on i have uh yeah obito versus minato the blood mist is like such a special situation he's really just fighting jobber characters there i don't know how to rank him I feel comfortable with uh, ranking this one, though. Uh, I'll go ahead and say Minato's not on this tier. And, you know, he did push Minato into using his strong attack. Strongest attack, but I feel like uh, Obito kind of here is just rough around the edges, and he does lose to Minato. Even though they kind of say, like, this is kind of the type of fight where the first person to, you know, connect their move wins. Uh, Obito still loses in that situation, I think. Uh, if I'm gonna put the older Obitos here, uh, I can't. I've got to put you know this Obito here, even though there are arguments that he should be here. But uh, moving on from that, of KCM one Naruto. Now KCM one Naruto is I would say not as impressive as as uh, people think. Uh, I certainly believe he's in the low demigods here, so like the fourth Raikage kind of bows down to him. Um, he's clearly, you know, he's a tier above the, you know, this Kage Summit Naruto, or yeah, not Kage Summit, but versus Pain. I already explained why this, you know, this Naruto definitely deserves to be right here. But like, for example, um, he doesn't do well against Nagato. Nagato is in this tier. He does not do well against Edo Nagato at all. He gets outdone by Edo Itachi, who's also in this tier. So he's kind of he doesn't do very well against a lot of these other demigods. He doesn't do well against, like, uh, you know, Warwick, Obito at first. Um, so he fights a lot of, like, these people in these tiers, and he doesn't do well until he starts getting into, like, KCM 2. And other, for, you know, further versions of KCM, so I feel like he's pretty safe here. Again, I'm going to be explaining more of these people as I kind of build these tiers, these demigod tiers. Uh, rounding out this tier is going to be Kabuto in Sage Mode. Um, I'm not going to be doing Snake Cloak Kabuto because he can basically go like instantly into Sage Mode if he wanted to, as he did against like Hitachi and Kabuto, or sorry, Hitachi and Sasuke. <clears throat> so with this Kabuto, I'm not, uh, you know, considering that he can do Edo Tensei because if, uh, if, if I did, he would be, you know, at least up here. But with this Kabuto, he's still able to fight against Hitachi and Sasuke. And a re really weird fight where basically no one's able, no one's going uh, for the kill for each other. But 
in that situation, he shows very impressive jutsus that's able to defeat or, or forces Itachi to save Sasuke on several occasions. For example, like with Sasuke, um, with EMS Sasuke, you know, he's basically like this version of Sasuke with better stamina and probably some better stats as well. Um, there isn't a version of, uh, you know, EMS Sasuke that fought Kabuto, but he'd probably be uh, between these two tiers. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't research that one uh, for this video. But I feel like he's got to be here at least because he did defeat, he really did defeat Sasuke, or really this version of Sasuke a few times in that battle, but he got saved by Itachi. So I've got to put him at least right there. Um, yeah, that rounded up that tier. So that moves into the regular demigod tier. Starting with Obito, uh, Orange Mask Obito. This version of Obito doesn't really do much. He kind of um, gets, he's kind of sloppy against Conan. He's kind of sloppy against, um, in the Kage Summit against Fu and Turone, or Turone. Um, but I feel like, you know, he's like 20, not 20 years older, um, but many years older than uh, this version of Obito. I feel like he's got to at least be on this level. He also should have, this version should also have Izanagi, whereas I don't think this version does. So that definitely puts him at least one tier above because that's like a, you know, an extra life. That's got to at least put you like one tier above that version. So I feel pretty safe about putting him here, which also makes sense because Minato, uh, I'm not going to be doing Joni Minato because I don't know, you know, especially this Minato, I don't know if there's any difference between that one and the Okage one for certain. But I feel like this Minato has to be here because he's able to defeat uh, this version of Obito in one attack. Um, um, going back to Obito, something that Minato said uh, when Minato and Naruto were talking in the middle of the pain fight when uh, Minato was in Naruto's mind, uh, Minato says, well, Obito's the real uh, problem, not pain. You know, Obito's the real leader, the real problem. Kind of a narrative moment where it kind of suggests that Obito is like uh, uh, stronger than pain, maybe. Certainly more of like a final boss. So that kind of more supports that Obito's on this tier. Not necessarily saying that Itachi and Pain can beat this version of Obito. Um, that goes for any tier, um, but it just kind of makes more sense narratively that Obito is above those two. And then also, you know, we have, we have this thing where I have to put him like at least one tier above, you know, young Obito. And young Obito is certainly low demigod level. But as for me, so like I said, he beats this uh, Obito. Um, certainly has to, you know, dig deep to do it, but he's able to do it in one attack. So I feel like that at least puts you there. Um, but moving on from that, I wouldn't say that, but actually I wouldn't say that, you know, KCM1 Naruto necessarily surpasses Minato at this point, even though there's like, you know, some rumblings about it. I don't think there's anything in particular that, you know, KCM1 Naruto specifically does that shows that he surpassed Minato. Certainly, um, especially with some of his performance against some of the people in this tier as well. But moving on from that, we have um, Edo Itachi, which should be in the Sakatsuki area somewhere. Yep. We have Edo Itachi, and I might as well just put Edo Nagato now. Yeah, we don't, I don't really know, we don't really know what healthy Nagato is capable of that much, so I'm just going to be doing Edo Nagato is basically the same thing. So. The reason why Edo Tachi is one step above regular Itachi because he basically has like a discount EMS. He's not held back by any type of physical pain that the Mangekyo Sharingan seems to inflict on you. He's not held back. He's not held back by a sickness either, uh, and he does very well. So, like I said with KCM One Naruto, um, he doesn't do that well against Itachi, considering Itachi has to save him against uh, Edo Nagato, which also explains why Edo Nagato is on this tier as he's able to basically defeat KCM1 Naruto and Killer B at the exact same time. Itachi had to save them, and really Nagato was going to defeat Itachi if it was not for Naruto and B, considering that, uh, you know, he Itachi used the both of them to, you know, blow up the planetary devastation. But then at the end, very end of the fight, Itachi gets the better of Nagato without those two help, so... A lot of noise there. I certainly feel like they're at least on the same tier. I think for some people, they think that's like insane for some reason. But I mean, uh, it kind of also explains why these two are on the same tier, which might surprise some as well. But like this, you know, Itachi was able to speed blitz Naruto uh, twice in that fight. Some people try to say that, you know, Kabuto was controlling him, so it made Naruto slower. 
<laughs> I don't really see how that's possible or saying that Nagato wasn't mobile enough. Um, I don't see how that's possible because he was certainly fully capable of using uh, almighty pushes whenever he wanted. And both of the times that Itachi attacked him with the Susano, Nagato wasn't able to use almighty push or even react in time to even try to use almighty push. So it kind of explains why, you know, their weaker versions will also be, you know, on generally the same level. But yeah, basically both of these people just perform like way better than Casey and more Naruto in that fight. They just perform uh, generally better. And then Itachi also kind of performs better than Kabuto despite how held back Itachi was. So Kabuto was going in for the kill on Itachi, but Itachi could not do the same because he wanted to break the other Tensei through keeping Kabuto alive. So that's kind of at least put Edo Itachi one step ahead of... Um, or one tier above this Kabuto, and then he does better than Naruto, and Nagato does better than Naruto, and that explains why Itachi and Pain are on the same tier, really, uh, when they're both um, in these weaker forms. So, moving on from that's probably something, you know, we're gonna have to talk about that in the comments, but really go back and look at what Itachi was able to do against Nagato in that fight, and it really seems like they're on the same, you know, caliber or tier. But moving on to running out the end of this list, I have um, Obito DMS. Now, he doesn't use his Susano with this. Um, <coughs> it would have been interesting to see, but I suppose he's still on the same level as just like Orange Mask Obito because he doesn't really use. Um, <laughs> it, he doesn't really use, you know, his, his dual Mangeki Sharingan to his fullest. He's basically just like a support character at that point in the story. I can't really justify putting him a whole tier above this Obito because uh, he doesn't do necessarily anything that could further um, him in the power scaling. Uh, there's one person I forgot on the low demigod tier, more like a monster. It's version 2, Nar or 6 Sails Naruto. There we go. Yeah, so 6 Sails Naruto was able to push Pain into using, you know, his strongest ability, I suppose. And was restrained, you know, withstanding his strongest almighty pushes, at least like his normal almighty pushes. So that's got to at least put him in the low demigod level if he's really pushing Pain that hard. Even though Pain really defeats that version of Naruto in the end. Um, so I'm not going to be doing like Warwick Naruto. That's basically either you know a stronger Seijima Naruto or you know a KCM Naruto in base. Don't feel like cluttering it up like that. And then Sage mode, you know. That's really just keeping in mind that he's able to go into KCM 1 if he wants to during that war. So, <clears throat> going into the high demigod tier, we only have three characters for this. Obito with the Rinnegan, or War Arc Obito, which is going to be yep, right there. So, I might as well just grab the other two. Uh, we're going to have KCM 2 Naruto, and then we're also going to have KCM 2 Minato. Yep. So these three are bordering on like God of Shinobi level in all honesty. Now, you know, even if you don't want to give like Obito his uh, Cherokee, since uh, he, I guess he technically controls them with the six fast shoots or whatever, even if you don't want to give him that, he's still, you know, he's going against KCM2 Naruto, and KCM2 Naruto is struggling during that. Uh, so like he there's multiple times during that fight that you know guy and Kakashi are like we need to go help Naruto He's not in a good spot um, Obviously KCM1 Naruto almost got caught by Warwick Obito and so Kakashi and, Obito, and Kakashi and guy saved him there and It's just kind of like I said the natural rep, uh, Evolution so young Obito and then orange mask Obito and then he adds the Rinnegan even though he doesn't use the Rinnegan abilities He seems to just get stronger uh, by this point, and I feel like he's got to be, like, right here. Like, this Obito is pretty insane, but I think, uh, he also can summon, like, um, he can summon the Ghetto Mazo, which kind of makes up for, like, the lack of attack power that these two people have, or these two versions had. So I feel like he's got to be here. Uh, KCM2 Naruto also is there, like, as I said, you know, he was struggling against Obito at some point, but, I mean, he's got half the nine tails. He destroyed... Uh, like seven of the tailed beasts or something or maybe it was six um, He was able to destroy them pretty easily and it forced Obito to recall them into the ten tails uh, And in general, he's just kind of when he's in this uh, regular KCM2 before he gets into Sage Mode stuff He's basically leading the front of like the entire army. So 
I feel like he's got to be, you know, here. Uh, and same with KCM2 Minuto. He also has half the Nine Tails. Now, he can't, like, throw Austin Shurikens with the Nine Tails, but he's able to do things like teleport. So, like, something as big and as powerful as the Nine Tails being able to teleport is flat out just scary. He's got to, you know, KCM2 Minuto has got to be on this level, even though we don't see, like, a whole lot of them. And so just kind of like explain uh, this demigod uh, people before I get into the, you know, the rest of the tier list. Uh, you know, Itachi goes here. He was able to easily defeat, you know, Chin Exams or Ichimaru. Uh, Pain's able to easily defeat Seijima Naruto when Diva Pass fully powered. This version of Naruto pushes Pain to his strongest Jutsu. Uh, this version of, Obi of, of Obito is just like the weakest version, so he goes here. KCM1 Naruto is uh, clearly here, but he is not performing well against either of these two. I mean, Seiji Mikabuto does not perform well against Edo Itachi, but he does perform well against EMS Sasuke, or at least early EMS Sasuke. And then Obito, this Arts Mask Obito, that's the evolution of this Obito. Uh, Minato is able to de defeat this Obito in one hit, and then Itachi is stronger because uh, he's basically that budget EMS. Nagato is stronger than Pain. KCM1 Naruto says that, and he seems to, you know, he kind of dominates KCM1 Naruto and then Killer B. And then we also have uh, this version of Obito. Doesn't separate himself from this version of Obito, really, even though the circumstances were way different. And then this version of Obito is also kind of the evolution of that version of Obito. He adds the Rinnegan, seems to do, be doing. Fighting against much stronger people, you know, whereas this Obito was kind of sloppy at points. And then this version of Naruto is leading the charge against, you know, this high demigod character. Uh, leading in basically just leading the alliance at that point. And then this Minato is fighting side by side with this version of Naruto at points. And he's got the same kind of power up, half the nine tails, and he can even teleport on top of that. Now you may have noticed that... <laughs> There are a few characters you might have realized uh, I should have ranked by now, unless you think they're God of Shinobi. Um, but I didn't rank these characters because these are kind of the people that I think are really overrated by the community. I think these are the people that um, I'm going to get hell over. Uh, but starting with, I suppose, the least uh, controversial one, I just didn't want to rank them until I really ranked uh, all the people around them to really explain and hammer in why they're not uh, in these upper tiers. Um, but starting with Sakura in the War Arc, uh, there's a there's a Kaguya version, a Kaguya Arc version, and a War Arc version. There's no there's nothing indicating those two versions are different. So I'm just going to be using War Arc Sakura because um, it makes more, I guess it's more self-explanatory. I've got uh, Sakura in the Kage tier now. <laughs> I have not looked that much into like these arguments that Sakura is like God of Shinobi tier. I would like to see them, even if you don't, you know, if you believe in Sakura being like uh, at least up here or even up here, uh, please explain to me why. I'd love, I'd love to see it. If you don't believe that, please also explain to me why, because I just, this is something I have difficulty grasping why people even, uh, you know, kind of do this. I see the arguments for the other people that I've waited to rank, but not for this one. Uh, really with this one, Sakura doesn't do anything in the war for a while because she's just working as a medic. And then once we get to like the final showdown uh, battlefield, uh, she does some things like she uh, is, you know, kind of wilding out against like the little Tendale's clones. I think uh, Hashirama says, well, her strength looks comparable to Tsunade, but Hashirama should have died when Tsunade was a kid. So I don't uh, really get why he said that. Uh, but there's some, you know, Tsunade seems to give her praise. Shizune seems to give her praise. Everyone's giving her praise at this point. It kind of seems like kind of with uh, the other, you know, Team 7 members, they kind of surpassed their Sani counterparts or at least equaled them. And she has like all of Tsunade's abilities at this point. Um, I feel like she can be at least at a Kage level, I think. Um, I feel like I'm pretty comfortable with uh, her putting that, you know, the war, uh, people were getting pretty powerful at that point. So, yeah, you know, I feel like she can definitely be at least Kage level. I don't see what the hype is with her, like punching Kage's horn off. Um, like, 
Like, is that really what we're going to use to put her in these tiers? Like, just, you know, she gets one punch off. Like, even, like, for example, like, Kakashi was able to, you know, sucker punch, you know, sucker Sharingan, or sorry, sucker Shidori, like, Kakakuzu from behind, but that didn't end up doing anything. And really, with Sakura, she just doesn't do anything one-on-one. -on -one. She's basically playing, like, the medic for most of the important parts of the war. So I don't see why... You know, just because she got one hit on Kaguya, I don't see why that can put her on, like, a God of Shinobi level character when there's absolutely nothing else that comes to my mind. And I really think I know a lot about this series that comes to my mind that could put her, you know, even the demigods here. You know, just because she punches, you know, a, you know, <laughs> a, you know, a six-pass character that's impressive, I guess. But... It, I don't see how anything else can put her, you know, at that point. And that's just, like, such a small thing to really put someone so high for. So we can talk about that in the comments, but the next person that I really, I could spend a lot of time talking about, but I will not, is Wara Kakashi, which I think this is just, uh, you know, I think he could either be Kage or High Kage. Personally, I put him in Kage because I don't think he is, um necessarily doing things that definitively puts them in this tier like for example onoki's leading the five kage and things things like that that nature kisame is destroying killer b for example uh war kakashi is he's working best as a support character so what we see him do so at the beginning of the war um he's able to easily defeat you know zabuza and that makes sense he was able to get stronger whereas zabuza had died so he ends up, he, you know, rushes ahead and he fights with, you know, Naruto and B and Guy. And he's playing a support character during that entire time. There's no point where he has to directly fight uh, Obito. That's what KCM2 and KCM1 Naruto were doing and B. Um, he's basically, he's using Kamui to counter Obito. He's able to deduce, you know, Obito's Kamui. And I guess he's basically, he stays in the back line for most of the time. Uh, there are even points, there are a lot of points, for example, where after he uses Kamui, he's totally gassed and, like, he falls to his knees or even just flat on the ground, right? And he's, you know, that's fine because he's playing a support role. And so while, you know, Naruto is following up and whoever else is following up on his attacks, uh, he's able to just kind of, like, lie there defenseless because um, Obito's not able to focus on him at that point. So... There's nothing necessarily going on there that I feel like definitively puts him in like demigod level tier. So there's he's keeping up for sure, but he's coordinating his attacks with Naruto ahead of time. So certainly Naruto, uh, it's very plausible Naruto is not necessarily uh, going full speed. They're synchronizing their speeds to be able to do that. Um, now moving on after that, he fights Obito in the Kamui dimension, but we know that Obito threw that fight. And then after that, he kind of doesn't do too much. Now, I do see some people that um, they try to put him on the same, you know, level as Minato for some reason because he was fighting with Edo Minato against uh, Zetsu. When Zetsu was clinging to Obito's body, uh, Minato and Kakashi were like, well, we need to, you know, kill Zetsu. They're being, and basically, we don't see any of that. We just see they're both, you know, they're using both their handheld jutsus. And for some reason, people are like, well, this must mean that Kakashi can fight on the same level as Minato, which I don't think is the case at all. Like, do you really, I don't see people thinking Kakashi and version 2 or KCM2 Naruto are fighting together. They're not on the same level. There's plenty of, up, you know, uh, examples you can make of two people fighting together and them not necessarily being on the same level, especially since we don't see what Kakashi and Minato specifically do. That We see they're huffing and puffing. It doesn't support the idea that they're fighting at the same, you know, level. Um, and other than that, kind of like going forward into the war, he doesn't do much, you know, against Kaguya until he gets into DMS, but I'll be ranking DMS le later. So I have a video on this. Um, I'm, I'm probably just going to forget to link it. So just, you know, uh, look up New Horizons like Kakashi or something and you'll find it. I have a video going into great detail about this. I do not have time for that right now. We'll talk about it in the comments because uh, I do I do have a hard time like understanding some of the arguments for him being in this level. Um, certainly, I can, I can certainly understand if you want to put him in this level, but I don't think he's showing anything that puts him above like a Oneki or what Kisame was doing. Or puts them above, like, uh, you know, Tsunade and Jiraiya, like, Sonny and activities. I've been trying to think of a way that I can put this 
uh, but there's no way to put this. Go ahead and give me all the smoke uh, right now. I'm not putting Toby Rama in the demigods here. Um, <laughs> and Edo Toby Rama, you know, the difference is he, uh, this Toby Rama can use tandem paper bomb, which could maybe put him in the demigods here because the scale of that jutsu was actually kind of insane. But the, it seems like he's much slower, at least mo noted by Madara, so I, it kind of feels like that evens out. Uh, we don't know exactly how strong that is because he threw it at Obito. It just looked really big. Uh, but anyway, explaining why Tobirama is not on this demigod tier. So for starters, uh, he did lose. He did get killed by Kinkaku and Ginku. Um, and some people try try to say that's like a recon because there's weird stuff in the war that I haven't looked too much into because I already know the counter to it. Uh, some people say I'll have to look at it after this video. I think King, when King Yu and Ginku are, you know, summoned, they're like, well, why is Toby Ram, why would Toby Rama summon us? And people use that as, as evidence to say that, well, that was a retcon, they didn't actually kill him. But that's not the case, because literally, like, a few chapters before that, when Tsunade is notified, um, you know, and A is notified that King, King Yu and Ginku have been uh, summoned, Tsunade starts talking about, I heard they, you know, they almost killed, you know, Toby Rama when he had the peace summit with, like, the second Raikage. So that's not retconned. Even if you want to retcon that they killed him, it's still clear that they uh, drove him to the brink of death because just a few chapters before that potential retcon, uh, that's brought up. So he's being brought to the brink of death by King Gyo and Ginkyo, uh by themselves. We don't even know if, you know, their force or, like, the King Gyo force was fighting him at that peace summit. So I just don't feel like demigods, any of these demigods are going to be, you know, be brought to the brink of death or killed against, you know, any, any of these people here aren't going to be brought to the death, uh, brought to death by these two people. Um, otherwise, he's kind of overrated as he's uh, basically used as a support. It's the same situation as with Kakashi. Um, he's basically used as a support in the work and people misinterpret like his abilities. So for example, uh, People try to hype up that he he's able to place marks and like explosive tags on um, he's able to place that on Tintail's Obito, but you know if he was alive during that he would have died uh, when that would have happened because Obito went straight through half of them. So that doesn't put him. I don't think that puts him on six pass tier or six pass speed because he's doing that after he would have died if he wasn't Edo Tensei. He stayed alive because he was Edo Tensei, and then he was able to you know. After he got destroyed, he was able to place some work on him, I think, then, and place some, you know, explosive tags on him as well. So, I can't really give him that much credit for that, at least not as much as, you know, some people like to do. And then kind of going forward, he does kind of spam that, um, he does spam his, uh, his mark on Tintel's Obito, but he's basically mostly just using either Obito's own attacks against him, or he's using like Naruto and Sasuke's attacks. Uh, so it's not him like actually fighting Obito. Basically, most of those times when they were fighting Tintel's Obito, he's just teleporting, teleporting like Naruto and Sasuke to use their attacks. He does that multiple times. Uh, he also says that at the beginning when the when the First four Akage arrived at the battlefield. Minato gets there like well before Toby Rama, and Toby Rama himself says, "You know, you're way better at teleporting than me." Uh, there's a bit of mis of a misconception with how Toby Rama can teleport. Uh, they seem to think he can teleport like Minato, but that's not the case. Minato pre marks his kunai's, and we see in a lot of his fights he likes to spread his kunai like all around and just start spamming, um, flying Raijin. Toby Rama can't do that. He has to manually mark on. Um, anything and usually in fights he only marks like one kunai and he only used that offensively so he's not getting the benefit of defensively using flying thunder god he's only able to use it offensively and not nearly as well as Minato or nearly as fast <clears throat> so i don't think that really puts him on that Minato level especially since Minato was able to kind of face off against the nine tails is able he showed he was able to face off against like people like obito as well so really it just comes down to the fact too that um he lost to these guys, even if you want to try and, you know, retcon that he died to them. He still got pulled, you know, put to the brink of death by two Kage level fighters. And then, like, his other kind of feats that people try to, you know, justify puts them in this tier or even, like, this tier. 
um, is just kind of circumstantial, whereas um, he's basically, like I said, he's basically, when he's using all those flying rights against Tentails Obito, he's being a support character and he's using just like Naruto and Sasuke's jutsus. Those are actually the jutsus that are like hitting Obito, right? And so it just feels like there's not enough, you know, evidence that he's able to be on this level. And some of the things with like Minato, some people try to say like Tobirama is stronger than Minato. I don't see it because, you know, he's weaker at teleporting, he has less attack power and things like that. Uh, so I don't really, I don't really subscribe to the idea that he's quite on this level. Um, certainly close, but not quite there. And I don't want to spend forever on this. I don't even, I didn't even get close to like a lot of my arguments talking about this. So let's talk about it in the comments and I'll, you know, try to get further into detail why he's not there. I'll give you all some rebuttals as well. Um, but anyway, now we can finally get into the God of Shinobis and the Six Paths characters. We're getting pretty close to the end now. <clears throat> a lot of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory, so I don't think I have to spend uh, that much time talking about it. So let's start with, yep, KCM2 Sage Mode Naruto. Uh, at this point, this is the Naruto that's basically fighting Tentails Obito along with EMS Sasuke. Uh, I'll go ahead and let y'all know that, you know... EMS Sasuke is on this level, you know, EMS Sasuke, you know, people don't really talk about much is that he's constantly growing in the work up to the point where he fights Tentails Obito. So this EMS Sasuke could also mean like the one that fought Kabuto and in that case he'd be like on the bubble here. But fully EMS Sasuke able to put like um, his perfect Susano around the Ninetales uh, seems to be certainly on this God of Shinobi level because even at that point with Obito, you know, Tentails Obito had been fighting, like, the Shinobi Alliance and, like, the elite uh, group of, like, Minato, Tobirama, and Sasuke, and Naruto. But once they got to this point in power, uh, basically, uh, the rest of the Shinobi Alliance just basically weren't even doing anything. Hashirama, like, rallies them and is like, okay, let's prepare to pull, you know, all the Tell Beast out of them. But basically, at this point, I think they're God of Shinobi level because they have you know, what's left of the Shinobi Alliance behind them, and the Shinobi Alliance as a whole don't feel like they can even, like, support them. Like, no one at all was supporting them towards the end of that, you know, Tentails Obito fight, and they do beat Tentails Obito, even though that might have been some of, of like, a conviction wavering moment for Obito. So I feel like they've got to be gods of Shinobi at this point because of that. Like, literally, they have the entire world behind them, and um, the entire world didn't feel like they could help them. Which puts them on that God of Shinobi tier, and that's really what being a God of Shinobi is. Being stronger than the entire world, basically, except for, like, you know, uh, six past characters um, and whatnot. Now, for the other, like, regular God of Shinobis, I have Edo Tensei Madara. Yep, there you go. Um, and then I also have Edo Tensei Hashirama. Even though Edo Tensei Hashirama beat Madara... Um, it seemed like, you know, maybe Madara wasn't super serious. Well, I guess Madara didn't have the nine tails. So, man, maybe eh, it wouldn't make sense with the tier list. I just got to put Hashirama there. But Hashirama did beat Madara and Edo Tensei. I feel like they're both kind of on that level because, um, you know, obviously Madara was just waiting Obito to get killed. Whereas with Hashirama, he didn't seem to join in with uh, their fight. Um, maybe he felt like it was necessary that he needed to uh, lead everyone else to get ready to pull like the tail beast out of Obito. Maybe so, but it was kind of weird he doesn't uh, join this fight when he probably should be strong enough to. I mean, he was able to you know restrain the ten tails with his um, deity gates, uh, and obviously Obito did kind of destroy him. He did say you know you know six pass Obito is stronger than me, but. He's, he's still God of Shinobi level for sure because of, you know, the Tentail stuff, even if he's in Edo Tensei. He's able to defeat Edo Madara, and Edo Madara was terrorizing the Shinobi Alliance. Uh, but into the High God category, I have, you know, Hashirama, who have already lost. There we go. And that's going to include, like, Sage Mode um, for both. You know, he can go into Sage Mode basically instantly, so I'm keeping that in mind. And then you also have Alive Madara, or I guess like Final Valley Madara. And then Sage Mode Naruto, or sorry, Sage Mode Madara, um, because he's brought back Alive. And I guess he's he should be stronger than this Madara, but he doesn't have something like, he doesn't have the Ninetales, for example. 
And I don't think he, yeah, he doesn't have any six pass abilities here. So I can't really justify him being six pass level or a six pass level exception uh, to that tier. So with these three, I think they're still stronger than Naruto and Sasuke. Obviously, they're stronger than their Edith and Zay counterparts. Once Madara was, you know, Rene rebirthed or you no. Know, uh, whatever it was, once he was brought back to life, um, he was way stronger than Edo Hashirama, instantly defeated him. Shows that he's at least one tier above. Should be the same, you know, power up for a live Hashirama as well. And <clears throat> why they're stronger than these two would be that Hashirama, or I guess Madara had the full nine tails and wrapped a full Susanoo around it. Which, whereas, like, you know, he only has the perfect Susanoo, he only has half the nine tails, and he has, you know, better than both of those combined. And then with Hashirama, he defeated that Madara. So it makes sense that these are like the high gods. And these are the people that are just entering, you know, godhood. Now, going into six pass characters, this is pretty straightforward. You know, six pass, I'll just, you know, uh, I don't really, you know, these two are going to be on the same tier anyway. So I'm just going to be doing this Obito. Um, I think I left, did I leave out a Madara that I needed to explain? Um, no, it doesn't seem like it. So, uh, Obito's on this point because, you know, as we saw, he's able to easily destroy Edo Hashirama in one hit. If that was a live Hashirama, he probably, you know, probably also gets destroyed. There are some, you know, theories that I think that um, Edo Madara was going to fight uh, Six Pass Obito if he needed to. I don't know how that would go, though, considering that Edo Hashirama got speed blitzed by Madara and Edo Hashirama beat Edo Madara. So, I don't know how that was going to go. But Obito's got, he's got, you know, six pass abilities, and that just puts you a tier above even the gods, because that gives you things like true seeking orbs, you basically have unlimited chakra, um, etc. So, and I, he can cast the infinite Tsukiyomi as well, which would, you know, anyone below him would fall prey to that Genjutsu. So, uh, you know, any, uh, you know, why he's on the lower path, because he doesn't have um, half the nine tails. He doesn't have the full eight tails either, so he's a weaker ten tails in Jurike than Madara, for example. Um, but going on to the only six pass exception, I'm putting eighth gate guy on here because uh, he's able. He basically puts Madara to the brink of death. Now he did need a little bit of help <coughs> because he needed Madara, or sorry, he needed uh, Kakashi to come away of truth seeking orb at one point. But otherwise, he was basically kicking Madara's ass, even though Madara was being arrogant. But he's the only character that we saw that was able to uh, bend space-time just by movement. And that's what made Madara fail to block his final attack, because um, basically the entire like matter around him was like bending, and he didn't even know what was going on. So I feel like that's got to put you at six pass at least, if you're able... Because um, he's the only, I guess, character that was not a six pass character that almost killed a... Um, six pass character like even Madara says I think he says you should have gone for the head and if he went for the head he might have um killed Madara in that instance the fact he's basically he's able to 1v1 Madara for most of that fight and um almost almost wins in the end so I feel like he's got to be six pass level um I don't think he'd do as well against Obito because I think Obito would just go into his true singing orb and just say fuck it and just uh, wait that out but uh, going into our other kind of six pass one kind of six pass kind of not six pass is DMS Kakashi now <clears throat> DMS Kakashi uh, Sometimes gets a little overhyped because people don't realize uh, he was on a short timer he, it, it only lasts for like a chapter it only does like a few things, but he does do <laughs> he is pretty broken when he is uh, functioning because uh, he's able, to, he's uses a perfect Susano, and he can, you know, use Obito's version of Kamui at the same time. So you can't, you can't kill him brute, through brute force, and then he can just phase through like most of your hacks. Um, and even like his Kamui shurikens did major damage against uh, um, Kaguya. Even his uh, Shidori at that point is so powered up that it's able to do major damage to Kaguya as well. And that kind of led to the opening that Sasuke and Naruto were able to use to uh, seal Kaguya. So certainly I think Kakashi's on this level but because um, he's on such a short timer. Um, I don't think I can put him in the highest six pass level. And then we have Hamura. Which yeah, you're down here. So 
uh, I guess kind of a forgotten Naruto character, but he's, you know, he fought with Hagoromo against Kaguya, and he's, but he's an Atsuki, I guess he's half Atsuki, so that's got to put him on six pass level, at least, that's all we really know about him, so I have to put him on the lower six pass level, uh, but going into the higher six pass level, we have, where we are, yeah, I'm not doing all these different versions of Madara, uh, they're really just going to all be high six pass anyway, um, so like I said, he's got more Tail Beast in him than Obito, so it makes sense that he's a tier higher. He can summon, or he can, you know, use the infinite Tsukiyome, which is gonna, which can take out, you know, probably most of these six pass characters, except for like Sasuke and maybe like uh, Kaguya and Hagoromo and Hamura. Can, um, but certainly Mater was holding his own against other two high six pass characters, at least for a little while before he got backstabbed. So I'll go ahead and put Rinnegan Sasuke, and that includes, uh, you know, Biju. The the power it, he can also use the power of the Biju for that ranking. You can go ahead and say that. Um, and then we also have, yeah, six pass cloak Naruto, and that also includes his Ostra avatar. This is like Final Valley Part Two for both of those versions. Um, all, you know, these two were basically going against Madara, and it, for, it worried Madara enough. Madara was kind of, like, messing around at first. When these two showed up, he was fighting them at first, and he was like, I can't do this, I need to summon the Infinite Sugiyome, which it felt like, you know, like that kind of felt like, um, Madara admitting that there was a possibility of defeat to these two, and he decided to, uh, just cast the Infinite Sugiyome real quick to ensure his plans, maybe. But even then... Um, Sasuke with the power of the Bijou has this exact same chakra power level up as Madara, except he's putting it into a stronger vessel, that being his perfect Susanoo. Uh, so that creates arguments that this version of Sasuke is stronger than this version of Madara. I know I'm in the minority for that, but if you're just going by straight power up, I don't see how you don't think that Sasuke is stronger. Um, and then also with Naruto, obviously he fought Sasuke, and they fought to uh, draw, basically. Um, I know some people try to say that Naruto was like way stronger than Sasuke at that point. I don't see it because um, even uh, people try to say, well, he's not going for the kill, where he's he's using his most strongest attacks anyway. And we've seen, for example, when Taka fought B, uh, there's a point in the fight where Suigetsu is like, even though we have to capture this guy, we need to be going at him like we're going to kill him. Otherwise, we will not capture him. So it's very, it's very possible to not go for lethal damage, but the, at the same time, uh, still be going all out. So I think he's still on this tier as well. <clears throat> and then we have Kaguya, I think. or I, I forgot to put Hagoromo. I'm getting pretty tired at this point, if you could not tell. Um, Hagoromo. That's not where you go. Hagoromo... There we go. So, yeah. So, really, Kaguya and Hagoromo could be their own tier, like, above. But I just feel like, at this point, um, I didn't want to split hairs, I guess. Uh, certainly, Kaguya is stronger than these two. Hagoromo is probably stronger than all these people at his peak. But I just didn't uh, feel like putting, like, a peak, you know, six-pass thing or, like, a low six-pass um, type of type beat. So... <laughs> So, I think that's it. I think that kind of explains everything. Let's look at the people that I excluded. Um, yeah, I just didn't feel like a lot of these people, it just felt like it was going to clutter it. Are they just going to be on the same tier as like the version between them? No Boruto stuff. Um, I didn't want to do this because that's kind of complicated. And cluttering, that's all cluttering. That's Boruto, that's cluttering. Um, that's cluttering. Oh, I forgot. Oh, damn it. Oh, I forgot to put the Warwick fucking kids. Um, they... Where were they? Where were their shipping and counter... Yeah. So, the, uh, they have... Their shipping and counterparts are there. Oh, I guess I gotta put them there. So, I'm just gonna be putting, you know, a lot of these guys, they have like small moments in the war where they show, like, oh, look at me, I got stronger. But it's not like we were forgotten for the entirety of part two. They have little moments that show they're stronger. It seems like everyone gets stronger in the war. So, I can go ahead and put Kiba and Shina next to you as well. 
yeah. So Kiba and Shino going too high. <clears throat> um, yeah, I guess Neji as well. I I don't think he shows how he gets stronger at that point, so I feel comfortable uh, putting him on the same level as Shippa, and I don't think he shows any power-ups or anything that necessarily says he got stronger at that point. Um, uh, where's Rock Lee? Yeah, I'm also going to just... Uh, I guess I'm putting Rock Lee here. We don't really know what Six Gates uh, Rock Lee was capable of. Um, he did throw a kunai uh, <laughs> between Madara and Eight Gates Guy, so maybe that puts him on the six pass level. Uh, I've seen some people try to argue that, but I feel like Lee and Neji, like they're they're on the same tier here. So we're just gonna say they're on the same tier, you know, here. We, they, it's not like we know much about what their trajectories were like, so we're just gonna assume they were like the same. They both seem pretty hardworking. Anyway, um, is there any other kids I forgot? Tintin, <laughs> Warwick Tintin. Uh, she was going to try to seal Madara up before the Infinite Tsukiyama. I think people forget that. Uh, I don't think Tenten... Um, I mean, she can barely use this six-pass tool. She does defeat, like, a Mask of Kakuzio. But that's, like, day one uh, Warwick shenanigans. There's a lot of day one Warwick shenanigans that I didn't really get to talk to about in this video because I was trying to keep it concise. Is there anything else I forgot? We don't really know anything about EBK. A 68 guy we don't know that much about. We know he beats like 30% Kisame. Uh, I, I don't think I placed him because he was redundant. I didn't place War Guy because that I just did Composite Guy for the entire series because there's nothing showing that he got stronger from, you know, part one to the Warwick. Um, Hashirama in Sage Mode, that's just Hashirama to be simplified. simplified. Uh, we don't know what Hirozen was fully capable of when he was young, so I don't want to put that... Um, Edo here's in basically the same as live old here's him. Uh, yeah, basically the same. A lot of the stuff, I don't really need to be talking about every single old thing, but a lot of the stuff, it's like the, you know, the closest version that's on the tier list is basically including the stuff. Uh, these versions as well. Um, let's see. I don't think there is. But yeah, Kaguya is, that's just, you know, their strongest version, you know, which is stabilized version. I just put regular Kaguya to make it simple. Don't know that much about Fugaku and Canon, so I didn't feel comfortable ranking him. This is all Boruto stuff. Uh, I didn't feel like ranking the Tailed Beast, but I ranked their Jinchuriki, so that I should kind of tell you where I think they are. And I, th I guess that's it. Um, so like I said, a lot of this is logic-based, so like, you know, uh, so, uh, <laughs> oh man, it's getting late. So let's see. A lot of this is logic based. So basically, like uh, for example, what's a good example? So like Tamori and you know Conqueror, they get stronger by the end of part one. So I have to put them at least one tier above. For example, um, yeah, I already explained all my logic for all this stuff. Just look at the timestamps if you get complicated or confused about any of this stuff. Um, and just remember, I'm going to be active in the comments, or at least I'm going to try to. So if you've got any discrepancies or any questions, don't be afraid to comment. I'm probably going to be talking to you. We can definitely talk about some of my controversial um, rankings. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a, like, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. Comment something if you have something to say. And thank y'all for watching. I guess I'll see y'all next time.